I'll uh, call the meeting to order at 12.47 p.m., a meeting of the Tritown Cable Advisory Commission, for lack of a better term. Um, present at the table is um, Paul Alice, uh, Bob Armstrong, Gregory Shearer, Joyce Palmer Fortune, uh, myself, I'm Doug Finn from FCAT, and Attorney Bill Solomon to my immediate left. Um, we've got a lot of stuff to go over, and I don't want to make sure that we make the most use of our time. Um, I want to quickly just review the information that you've received previously, as well as this, this uh, estimate which you have received today. Mm -hmm. um, I'll actually start with this since it's in our hands. Um, okay. This is a second revision of an estimate for equipment upgrades received from HB Communications. This was um, the result of a couple of meetings between uh, myself, Chuck Sherwood, and I believe it was Brian from uh, HB. Um, where we talked about the various needs. We talked about the strategic need to spend down some of the money that is being used or that's currently in the accounts at Waitley, Deerfield, and Sunderland. And um, I had a walk around through four towns with, with Brian um, looking at the municipal facilities, the recording equipment, the cameras, that sort of thing, and what I hoped to, that we could achieve. Um, he went back, worked his magic, and this is the um, result. Um, the front page, of course, is a summary. The bottom right-hand corner of that grid on the front page is the bottom line. Um, I would like to say that this is uh, something that is going to be revised even more. Um, the result of the first revision uh, was that I suggested, and I threw this out there. I'm not sure if it's a good idea, and I really wish there was someone here from Sunderland to, to agree or disagree. But... Um, the, in the original estimate, HB had priced out um, a main recording console for Town Hall that's essentially a built-in unit, and it would have been an upgrade to their existing system. To me, it made more sense to actually just invest in a good portable unit and then a table for it to sit on at Town Hall by default. Mm -hmm. So normally it would sit on that table, would be connected to the infrastructure and the cameras at Town Hall. And when it comes time for a school committee meeting or a special town meeting, you disconnect the wires, put the covers on, and bring the unit to the remote location at uh, the, the elementary school or wherever it happens to be. Um, so, you'd be overall the end result is we would save between forty and sixty thousand dollars by doing that, and that's where this revision two comes in place. Um, however, I'm also thinking that I want to go back with HB uh, with the same rationale, work up the same thing for Conway. Because in Conway, we had talked about a portable set of equipment and a built-in console for, um, for Conway Town Hall. Now, in this case, I don't think we would actually save much money because in Conway, Conway was going to be the beneficiary of the upgrades from Deerfield. The cameras that we see in this room just be for the Deer, right, exactly. These cameras would be replaced with high-definition ones, and then these cameras would go to Conway to outfit their, their meeting room. But... Um, and that would still be the case, but we would use still, uh, we'd still build out a full portable kit um, that was both standard and high definition capable, so we could use that uh, in town hall, but also at the school or at the um, yeah. the uh, upstairs the town gymnasium. So and the, and the rationale for doing that in Conway was because the space is so small, it would actually be. I've, I've been in that room, and I can't see where you would put a camera up on a tripod. Oh, right, absolutely. <laughs> um, no, that, we that, would, that was really the, right. the, the driving piece there right. rather than doing it somewhere else. Um, and, for example, Sunderland having built-in cameras. Mm -hmm. um, the, it, the cameras sort of being built in is sort of independent of the, the unit being Very built. much so, very much so, yeah. Um, and with the, uh, the, the, the remote cameras like we see on the walls here, that does make more sense for Conway's Selectman's meeting room where we would have those, we'd have a couple of microphones like these on the table, and that would be it. That would be the only intrusion into that space. The control of those things would be upstairs, which is also where the, uh, the cable drop is. Um, so that seems to make the most sense. Oh, um, and the person doing it is upstairs. And yeah. the person doing it would <laughs> be upstairs. Stone them now, yeah, one yeah. control room, three different rooms, yep. Yep. and they're in, you know, in that separate room. Correct. You know, has some isolation, but gets them out of the other room, right. more space, <laughs> right. and lets them do more than one meeting. And, the play, and, and that can all be done on the portable? Or um, well, in the case of uh, Conway specifically, there's really only one meeting space. Um, so we would just look right. at a single, right. single meeting at a time capability. In the case of Sunderland, pretty much the same thing. Uh, there's only one meeting space, um, just like in Waitley. Well, but in Waitley, that's going to change. 
That's right, I, correct. That's one of the reasons I asked that, because that's going to change when we have the new town hall, which is, oh, it's going to town meeting in April. Correct. <laughs> so what, so what we might look April, at but. for Waitley is what we're doing in Deerfield, where we're actually going to maintain the, the control for this room with the multiple pan tilt zoom cameras. But this estimate actually prices out a self recording unit for each of the smaller rooms where there is a uh, still a basic camera, a microphone that's placed on the table, um, but essentially a wall unit uh -huh. where you walk up, you walk into the room, there's a big red button, there's a big green button. And when you want the meeting to start recording, you press green. Mm -hmm. And when you want the meeting to stop, you press red. Okay. And so it wouldn't require staff at all. It would be sort of a, a self-recording mechanism. Mm -hmm. Those and meetings would- And the cameras are still- The cameras would still basically be fixed. They would have the date and time at the bottom. These would not be necessarily for cable cast because they would, they would look like security camera sink, footage. Yeah. <laughs> but what these meetings would do is go into that network attached storage that we were talking about earlier, the, the central uh -huh. data repository. And those meetings would then be available to the secretaries, to staff, and to us if we needed them uh, for later reference. So there's no reason why we couldn't also take those meetings and put them onto video on demand for people to watch if they, if they so chose. Um, but it would be yep. less person intensive. It would right. be the, you know, on the committee to actually start and stop their own recordings. Um, and it would mean a faster turnaround, uh, less work on our part. As soon as yeah. the meeting is done, as soon as that stop button is pushed, yeah. the meeting is available. More automated is probably the Absolutely. better for us. Absolutely. Okay. And, and that's what I, I think we would probably look at for the uh, Waitley Town Hall when time comes as well. So. The Sunderland Town Hall is, is going for a vote or Waitley? Waitley. Waitley Town Hall for a vote for a new town hall? Yeah, well, for uh, re... Um, renovating. Renovating, yeah, and adding a little addition and things like that. We just had a big stakeholders meeting the other day, and, uh, you know, we're moving forward. <laughs> when is that vote? Uh, well, uh, it'll be town meeting will be the vote for, um, yeah, for, the, for, like, the big one. Last town meeting was the vote for... Here's the funds to get the bid documents ready, bid ready documents. Bid ready documents will be there and presumably bids as well. Um, so we'll actually be voting on do we go into debt for this thing. So that's, that's okay. April 20 something. So probably not before these negotiations have made a lot more progress. Okay. Um, any other question on uh, that HB communications estimate? Um, yeah, when I, I mean, I'm wearing two hats here today um, for FCAT and for Waitley. And um, the Waitley looks like it's got a new mobile production <coughs> similar to what you just described for Sunderland. Correct. Um, but there aren't, there's no um, like built in cameras, things like that even budgeted into the future and I think that's going to be somewhat of a problem because in Waitley the savings so to speak the money that we've set aside um, from previous Comcast res re revenues was really earmarked for when we will redo town hall to put in some of okay. those things and spending that down ahead of time we'd, we'd have to have a really good reason and very you know, much assurance that the money would be there for the built-in portions. Okay. We, 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 the, have to, um, we have to at least address that um, somewhere. If if this is a plan for spending down money, which I'm not sure that we've really decided to do yet, but no, if, that's, no. You know, if that's where it's going, I think that's going to be something we have to address, that we need to be able to set something aside the, um, in the, either new revenues coming in with the new contract or um, setting aside the old revenues for for that portion, for the built-in cameras and the meeting rooms. Sort okay. of. The, um, the, the Waitley estimate does include um, three Sony high-definition pan tilt zoom cameras with the ex expectation that they would be mounted on tripods yes. um, to, to allow them to be portable. Um, to make them built into the facility, we could use the same cameras um, with just the addition of some you know, uh, wiring that would allow them to be placed onto essentially a shelf like we see over right. there, placed in place yeah. and then connected to power. But, the, and, but and then the they video. wouldn't be portable. Well, no, no. They, they would able be able to be easily taken off the shelf and put yeah. into a case. Yeah, we'd, we'd be doing that. It's sort of like your, your, your situation in Sunderland. Right? Okay. We have to go to the school every month to do the school committee, and then there's usually three or four other meetings per month per year over at the school. Sure. Okay, so it would be on a regular basis that you're yanking them out and putting them 
back in. Okay, so we're so, looking to add. Yeah. Okay, so what we're looking to do is uh, from Joyce uh, add uh, fixed PTZ cams to Waitley Town meeting space, and I'll put in parentheses an S. Um, um, design hold on Waitley um, Town Hall estimate until finalization of the town hall yeah. project yeah but in if the town hall project doesn't go through then we build, build those into whatever you know whatever uh, right. the rooms that we're using now. sure sure um, okay the other thing that was uh, in the back of my mind oh it's about to slip out my other ear here um, that sounds was related Oh, it'll come back, I'm sure. Oh, the you mentioned about that automatic um, yep. kind of unit. That involves like a camera and a yep. controller and so on. Is that included in the Waitley? No. Um, no. So if, that, that's also longer term. So <clears> I understand <throat> that, right. that part of the reason for coming up with this was to spend down existing money. Um, but if this is also, in some sense, a longer term planning document that that um, should be in, included in our longer term planning if it's not appropriate to include here. Sure. No, I totally understand. Um, I think there are two additional meeting rooms in the plan for the new town. So is that going to be something that Waitley is going to want to do? Outfit those additional rooms with recording? Yeah. Okay. Then in that case, we'll need Especially if, um, if it's an automated kind of system. Yeah, yeah. And I'd certainly think uh, at least one of the two rooms. Okay. So if we're, we couldn't really afford two, then, you know, maybe, but I would think two would be ideal. And then the main meeting room. Okay. We'd probably want to have one with because that'll be the, the the big meeting room for the selectmen and the big meeting room for the planning uh, committee um, would be the the main one to be used. But there's lots of other groups that have meetings in the or, and will be using the smaller rooms. I think similar to the way things run in Deerfield. So I'm putting in the notes to add two user managed recording systems to the Waitley Town Hall. So that's going to be an additional sixty thousand dollars. Yeah. And if, if you know if we're looking for something to cut at that Waitley, then we'd certainly be willing to cut one of those. Um, you know, given that you know, just, we got to stay within a budget, we got to stay within what we can really afford. If but, you if you plan on doing three recording rooms, then it makes more sense to do the single console, um, because essentially the cost of two user managed recording systems is pretty much equal to the same cost as outfitting town hall with a single recording console. But the last time we looked at the, and granted, the plans were very rough, the last time we looked at the plans, there was no room for a console. Um, well, that's, see, right now they're, they're doing the bid-ready documents. We're working with Marco Jones, and I get to be on the committee of people who deal with them about what we're going to need for cable. Okay. Um, so they're, they're aware that we are going to need to um, figure out some place mm -hmm. for whatever, you know, whatever our needs are. So what, if we really need a space for a console, then, mm -hmm. then uh, that's what we should let them know. And I would strongly suggest a system similar to the scope and size of, of uh, Sunderland. Not necessarily that shape of console, but it being located at the back of the main right. meeting room. Right. And they'll want to know how much space. Right. Yeah, you know, they'll want to, because that's what they're, what they're, where they're at right now, how much space they're going to take up and where should it be located within the building. Because when they're going to do, they're going to strip out everything from the inside. Sure. So they'll, bear, they'll have bare walls available to put whatever kind of wiring we need in. Mm -hmm. um, so that so, as long as they know in advance what kind of wiring sure. we are going to need and where it's going to have to go to, then that should be pretty easy to sure. to put in and not have to retrofit. Um, Bob, any comment from Conway? <laughs> this? I don't know anything about it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Any other? So what's, hap what's happening with Deerfield? Uh, you're saying these are coming out and you're um, putting. Yeah, we'd, we'd basically be keeping the same general design layout. The only difference is we'll be upgrading everything to HD spec. Um, so they'll still be located like that? And yeah, that will probably change because that camera position and, and the one back there are pretty useless. <laughs> um, I would rather see, um, instead of the one at the back of the room, I'd rather see it located there, kind of one post closer and one post closer over here, and yeah. have that camera actually be mounted um, basically right in front of where this projector screen is, and this projector screen is never used. No, I know that. There's start always one set up here. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, and so how, how, how does that, I'm just curious, you know, at the meetings, um, when we want to project something on a screen, 
you know, how do you deal with that to get it out to the public? Well, there is the capability. There's the capability exists in this building to actually plug a laptop into the system, um, and it'll uh, allow us to feed back the signal um, directly to the the. the so, in that, so in that case, there, if you had some flat screen TV here, that would then be that the, might make more right. sense than a projector. Right. Right. Yeah. And then it, it, from the from say Gabe's point of view, it looks like a third camera or a fourth camera. Right. That makes a lot to. of sense because yeah. we're trying to digitize all of our sure. presentations that sure. we have from from a planning board situation. You know. The other the other possibility is, and this is outside of the scope, I think, of what we can talk about. But looking at this room, personally speaking, I would love to see a, a physical renovation of this room itself, um, allowing for enclosure of this space a pass-through hallway back along there, but enclosure of the space along the, the, the corridor, the surrounding corridor. Um, so you still have a door here or and one at the back of the room, but otherwise it's enclosed. Um, then we could actually, with a wall here, we could actually put a projection screen up here. I'm sorry, a large LCD. Yeah. And mm -hmm. tie in everything much more cleanly. Um, it would mean for a better presentation, a better looking room, um, but it would also mean a couple hundred thousand dollars at a minimum to put some walls up. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So there's that. Um, that's a bigger conversation, something we can't really address here, but it's certainly something that's possible and something we can talk about later on. <clears throat> um, let's move on if we can. Um, okay. Everybody should have received a copy of the ComTrack um, estimate, the Fiber Municipal Area Network. Do we um, happen to have a hard copy? I should have a couple of hard copies floating around. Yep, right there. In case someone needs it. Anybody else need one? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, you have to share. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one. You've got one? Already, yeah. Okay. Um, then, Bob, how do we share? Who's the last one? Oh, you use it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let me see. Um, on page one, two, on page three of that estimate, um, it lists, it starts the list of sites. And you'll notice that it definitely starts in Conway, um, which is actually unexpected. Uh, we had originally, I think, sort of decided to not necessarily connect this network with Conway, but that's okay. Um, and it connects both Conway Town Hall as well as Conway Elementary School. We would probably want to add the Conway. Um, what's listed as Conway Town Hall is Conway Town Offices, 32 yeah. Main Street. Yeah. We'd want to add the Conway, the actual Town Hall. Um, to this network, but since it's along 116, it would be able to be done um, fairly easily. Um, Deerfield Town Hall, Deerfield Senior Center, Deerfield Access Corp, which is listed at 88 Elm, but it should be 8B Elm, and they're aware of that. That was just a typo. Uh, Frontier Regional School, Tilton Library, the Safety Complex, oh, basically the Fire Department, and then the Deerfield Elementary School. In Sunderland, the Sunderland Town Hall, the Elementary School, Sunderland Library, and the Sunderland Public Safety Complex on River Road, and then Waitley Town Hall and Waitley Elementary School. Um, it's and, and not the library. Um, it's the library should be connected um, in Waitley, so we need to add that to that yeah, it, scope it's as right well. It's right along the line. It's not going to be. It's right along the way to get into Town Hall is the library. So sure. It physically won't be. Um, uh, won't be a big thing to add. Right. Right. Also, along, I mean, not knowing whether the town hall will pass, um, there, our town offices are also a little further up the road on Main <coughs> Road. Excuse so me. if our if our town hall is redone, then we don't need to have the old center school be a part of this. Sure. But if sure. It is if it doesn't pass, and we end the up the center school <laughs> is at the where where the that milk that bottle is. It's not listed now, though. It's not listed yes. now. It's, um, I, Wait, the what center school? The place where the selectmen meet is the center school. It's got the milk bottle out front. It's right on the corner. And that's not town hall? That's not town hall, no. Okay. Town hall is further down across from the Waitley Inn. Next to the post office. Oh, okay. Next to the post I office. See. They're all along Chestnut Plain Road there. What's going to happen with the center school after assuming the that town hall? That is not 100% right? decided. Got um, it. But it's likely that if we found someone who would use it for some good purpose that it would be sold to them for a dollar or something like that. Okay. Um, well, or the historical society is there now, isn't it? The historical society is there now, and um, I'm not sure. Well, I, this isn't about what the future yeah, of, yeah. of, of okay. Waitley Center School, but but that's that's something that we're still bouncing ideas around um, around for. 
Um, we could go through all the tech specs of this. Um, granted, we would need to add those, those drops as we talked about. But what's important to note is that this estimate, I believe, does not include um, any uh, endpoint connection hardware. So it basically is the fiber network hanging the fiber on the poles, getting the, um, uh, and it also doesn't include licensing or easement costs, I believe. It's literally the cost for the fiber. terminating the fiber. What's that? Is it just a fiber run? No termination. It's just the fiber run, no termination. It's the fiber? Fiber run, no termination. I mean, it terminates at a, a panel, a patch panel in each building, but that's it. Yeah. Um, so if we wanted to use it for specific purposes, we would have to um, uh, also purchase the hardware to either add the digital conversion device to bring an analog signal in or, or whatever it happens to be, or a, a proper switch if we're going to use it for data communications, so on and so forth. Um, the bottom line is pretty impressive, um, 365000 um, And I could easily see that going to about a half a million if we include hardware connection points for each, for each location. Yeah. Um, so there's that. Um, I believe we got this estimate basically as a negotiating tool, something that we could bring to Comcast and basically say, here's and what to we're look to see at. if you know what 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 it would cost <clears throat> to build your own to build a fiber network. However, the funding came, sure. so you, we could understand that. And as you said, as a yeah. as an option, depending on on yeah. where we felt we needed to go with video return, and then where Comcast felt it wanted to go, whether we'd have an option to have a an INET, buy, an INET buyout or video return buyout. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is not necessarily likely to happen, but this is a one one of many possible choices we may have, and this having the information was the important thing. Th that's right, because uh, and we'll be talking hopefully today about you know the, the video re existing video return and, and where it, where it has been built and how it's working and where it needs to be built, and we have this as a sort of a marker as another methodology, yeah. albeit more difficult when it's a small communities in a larger geographic area. Yeah. So is this proposal to connect the four towns with fiber or just within each town? This would interconnect all four towns on a single network. So it would run, run a line down from Conway to Deerfield? Correct. Deerfield, Whaley, so if connected. there's a presentation happening at the, the Waitley Library, all the other three towns could actually make, could see that same presentation at their own libraries. Or better yet, if there's an author making a presentation at the Waitley Library, it would be possible for people to gather at the Sunderland Library, watch it on the screen, and then stand and ask that author questions. Right, right. Um, a, single a single town meeting happening in one location could theoretically be seen in all four towns. Um, so it definitely has broader applications than just local access TV. Um, it could be used for intercommunication between towns for whatever reason, safety, uh, communications, safety and security communications between towns. Yeah. Um, Tri-town EMS could use it? Tri-town Tri EMS could use it. So w Absolutely. is this a proposal by FCAT to do this, or did the towns somehow <laughs> collectively say this is what well, we Well, I, I think I, I suggested it as something to look at yeah. for the possibility of it being used for peg access to the return together with the benefits to the towns. What I, what I said is I, I, now I, I just, every license I do, with almost almost no exception, I, I uh, have contract come meet, discuss with the towns or cities its their needs, uh, and propose a, 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 a municipal fiber network, or if they have a municipal fiber network, to expand the municipal fiber network. Um, and then, as we get as as we discuss, I mentioned the cable video return. Let's say you have just an old coaxial, you have a mixed, but an old coaxial system that doesn't work well, poor picture, poor sound, modulators are always needing to be tweaked to replace, you can't get them anymore. Even mm -hmm. Comcast realizes they need to leave that. So one option is to say to Comcast, all right, build a new, they don't want to build, quote, an INET, but a build video return, just for peg access video return. And that all of a certain cost, and I want to be able to say it to Comcast, well, all right, Hey, why don't you, when we kind of figure out our numbers and to negotiate what their cost to build that system would be, say, well, give us the dollars and we'll build it and we'll take, relieve you of the responsibility and we'll be able to use it for municipal and school and other purposes as well as video return. But I mean, I know that Brian has long proposed this as the way towns should connect to the MBI's network. You know, connect in one place, just pay for one large bandwidth connection rather than 
each town paying for have it. Each, well, each, each um, facility in the town, have the library by a connection, have the school by a connection, have the town hall right. by As a connection. We probably better understand a little for Brian and, and, and folks that, that, you know, they, they, want you to, they want you to buy services rather than to buy bandwidth in a sense, or you buy, or you buy bandwidth, but you're not buying right. a line. And so that's right. So we'll talk about it as going forward, and we have it as, an, as you know, an option, even if it's not something that comes into cable licensing because of the numbers. Uh, it's, it's, it's something for the, the towns to know is yeah. exists and what it is. So when you talk about it, you can see if it's reality-based. I would love I would love to have the opportunity to basically lease a couple of pairs of fiber at each of these locations from from MBI, um, not with an internet connection, but specifically with the, the express purpose of connecting these buildings with each other. Um, they would lease them to you. At well, I'm not sure. Price. Yeah, well, maybe. yeah, the yeah. difficulty is that every every conversation I've ever had about it has always been, well, you need to talk to the ISPs that have signed up to be on this network, right. and then the ISP is going to talk to you about bit rate, bandwidth, and all the services they're going to provide you that you can use to connect to the Internet. And we want to leapfrog over the ISPs. We want to go right to MBI and say, lease us the fiber. Just dark period. fiber. Just, we want, because there's 12 strands going into every single C, uh, what, COA, is that what they're called? And those are already um, in place. Those that, are in place. Because that was going to be my We want to just take two of those 12. Boom. Done. And it would serve, and one as data, and one as data and video. And that would be enough to interconnect the towns with each other and allow us to abandon the, the coax INET. Right. And, and um, maybe that's something that's, you know, policy politically possible. I wouldn't, sure. I wouldn't. Uh, give up on that, but this is a good market to compare that to. You know, as discussed, yeah. we discussed about the other movement here in the bill to expand uh, broadband. I mean, and, and cable in, in Western <coughs> Massachusetts. Um, any other thoughts or comments on that fiber network? Yeah, just I, I want to make sure I understand that if if this were to happen, it's like basically redoing MBIs. Fiber. In a way, right? It's You're, duplicating what's it's, already it's there. It's duplicating yeah. something that's already there right. because we can't seem to get access to it otherwise. So there's this great taxpayer-funded fiber network that we're basically not really allowed to access um, because, well, I think I know why. Because you know, people don't respond to voters; they respond to the people who contribute to their campaigns. But we haven't actually tried yet getting it, our it elected be, officials. <laughs> Right. Um, on their case, and I think we, I, I have the ear of at least one of them, and sometimes two of them, but um, that might be something that we could start um, if we have a really well-formed question to ask, like why can't we just fill in the blank, go around these companies, and the answer might be because they contributed to Speaker DeLeo's Re, you know, re-election <laughs> campaign and so on. Yeah. That might be the answer, and it might be that we would have to do something duplicative. But if we do have to duplicate all of that, we should freaking let people know, and we're a media outlet. <laughs> we should let people know. That's really, that's really, um, it's wasteful, and it's something we've already paid for it, right? We've already paid for this fiber that's in place. Now, I don't know that it goes to every single location that we're talking about. Um, I, I would, know it I goes. Think with very few exceptions, I think it hits pretty much everywhere. Yeah, um, I don't know if it goes. For example, I know it goes to Waitley Center School. I don't know if it goes to our Town Hall and Library. Really? I don't. I don't know. Is what I was okay. saying. Okay. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it goes to the elementary school, um, but my guess is it probably does. Okay. Um, I will add to. Uh, or, or does not because the school paid for that. They they wouldn't include our school in the first round because they were real big jerks. Um, but the school put it in its budget, and they're getting it this uh, this year. Okay. I'll put it on my list of to-dos to get a list of all the, I think it's called CAI. CAIs, all Community the C Anchor Institutions. There you go. Oh, okay. Get a list of all the CAIs for I each of the four towns. I could get that for you. Or, or you oh, can. if you can. If you can, that'd be great. Um, and okay, that would be great. If you'd like, I can, unless you're better in touch with the MBI folks, can you uh, set up there a There is a guy at Frontier who I could get you his name, who's kind of the central authority for all of the four towns and their CAIs. But okay. Each town has an MBI rep. Uh, oh. I wonder who's on. East Conway has an MBI rep. Oh, I okay. don't know. I wonder who Waitley's is. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Yeah, we might not have one. It might be me. 
contact at. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna uh, just put that on your plate to get me that name of that contact okay. at Frontier. Yeah. 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 And then I will. Um, um, I'll contact the person at Frontier, try to find out what I can, and then hopefully get in touch with MBI and start asking some hard questions. Um, and if we run into brick walls there, then we take it a step up and, and call Steve Kulik or Stan Rosenberg or someone along those lines and see if we can put some real political pressure on it. I don't know if Sounds like you're a long not. way from that. But well, well, I would yeah, say we are. We are a few steps away from that. Yes, yeah, but think, yeah. nonetheless. My, uh, in, in Conway, there's a guy who works for Axia. And I would ask him mm. first. Oh, okay. Long before that. I mean, I'm not saying don't call Steve Kulik, but. Um, well, Axie is the, the company that's managing the network. That's right. Right. So the, that's who we want to be talking with. You would want to talk to Axia, and you'd be talking to a, a guy. You, you, he, the guy who works in Conway is probably not the right guy, but you would be wanting to talk to Axia and say, what would it cost to lease two dark fibers between all of our four towns? Right. And, right. With interconnection at their. Basically, that's all we want. We want a central node at their offices and then the ends elsewhere yeah. to make basically a single a central prime. node at whose offices? Uh, at Axia's office. Um, we don't or want to leave the Springfield, you mean? Yeah, mm -hmm. right, whatever. Springfield um, is where all of these towns all connect okay. down, you know, down to, the, to the Internet. Right, so they would take those specific fibers, tie them together with a fiber switch. That's it. No connection to the world. Only connection between each other. That's what we're looking for. Right. Um, I mean, if, if we're trying to do something that's similar to what you would achieve by this, then yes, that's, I think that's right. That's the thought, yeah. So, you know, if, if towns want to buy Internet service on the MBI network, certainly they should be going through the ISPs. That's something separate, though. Um, this wouldn't replace that service. At least that's my understanding. Yeah. No. We have ten other fibers. Yes, so if a town, with, if, you know, <laughs> each of the CAIs has got fiber going to it that connects down to Springfield, and they can sign up with Crocker or somebody to be their ISP. And right. Crocker would then, you know, connect their backhaul to those fiber lines in Springfield. Sure, yeah. sure. Okay. So we both need to get some more information on that. All right. Any other thoughts on the... the uh, um, on the contract proposal. Okay. Um, I wanted to just give folks an update on uh, the FCAT facility. Um, I was looking for some supplies downstairs in our current building and had to wade through two and a half inches of water in the basement. Um, oh, I, I used that Leo's? as Leo's, yeah. Oh. And I used that as context for our sort of interest in uh, <laughs> finding a better facility. Um, we have explored all sorts of options, whether it be leasing space in some of the industrial buildings, to purchasing space, uh, empty buildings that might be available, to partnering up with some other organizations. Um, the only thing that's still out there that might have a potential is the, the potential to partner up with the Triton Ambulance Service if the purchase of the Western Mass Regional Library System building on, in uh, the Whateley Industrial Park, if that goes through there might be space there for FCAT. Yeah. We might be able to take a portion of that building for our use. Um, but it's my understanding that's at least a couple of years away. So there's yeah. that. And there, there is another buyer for that building. And that deal would have to fail in order for us to be next in line I see. to try and do that. So, Any idea who the other buyer is? I do not know. And okay. um, uh, I'm not sure that if Lynn knows, she's allowed to say. Probably but. not. Yeah. OK. Um, there is one possibility that I am researching here in Deerfield, um, and there's a lot of hurdles to make it happen. It would involve building <laughs> a new facility from the ground up, um, but if possible, it would mean a facility that's very centrally located, that's inside the existing network, the uh, cable network, um, so it would be an easy connection to that. Um, it would be something that would be a great community resource for Deerfield, um, as well as the other towns. Um, uh, but the, like I said, there's a lot of hurdles that would need to be overcome before that happens. Preliminary estimates for the basics of a building are still anywhere from two hundred fifty to five hundred thousand um, dollars. That's just to build the structure. That's not to outfit it with any specific studio gear. 
um, but it would be a structure that would be about 3,600 square feet, um, lar a very nice large meeting space and studio with smaller uh, conference and uh, classroom space available as well. Um, so that's ongoing. Yeah. Um, I'm right now waiting for uh, a preliminary estimate from Renaissance Builders. I have two, uh, a f an estimate and a revised estimate from a company called Morton Buildings out of Westfield. And I've been trying to get in touch with Hampshire, I think it's Hampshire Construction Company in North Hatfield, and have mm -hmm. played phone tag with their sales rep back and forth for a, a few times. But um, I'm just trying to explore all, the, all options from a, um, a basic industrial style metal building built on a, a concrete slab to something that's actually more attractive, more uh, in line with community expectations for a, an in-town building um, and something that would be more, e well, easier to maintain, easier to use. Um, I did receive, also, I'm sorry, I didn't mention, I received a, an estimate from uh, uh, Habitat Builders oh. right here in Deerfield for the basics of the building, and that the kit would cost about $165,000. Um, that was for the most trimmed down possibility. A proper kit would be between three and $400,000, and that's essentially a bunch of lumber that arrives on a truck mm -hmm. um, that doesn't pay for right, the construction of it, right. doesn't pay for the you concrete. You hire a builder Exactly, that. we yeah. need to hire a builder after that, so unfortunately that seems out of our price range. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where we're at, but I, I do want folks to keep that in the back of their mind that that's something we're looking at. We're, we're definitely trying to see if it's possible to create a new facility. Um, um, to have, okay, that's good. Um, when I look at all of the other community access television facilities, they're all <laughs> at least as funky as FCATs. You know, they're they're all in old, interesting yep. buildings. Yep. Uh, yep. I, I, I can't say the same is true for my experience. The one I went to for the five towns in Western Mass, Lee, and like four of its neighboring towns, they were in a, something that looks not unlike. This metal building, um, a nice that, Morton building, is a little more. Yeah, the Morton building yeah, one. Yeah, um, building. It, 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 they, they're in one of those. Um, the uh, FCTV in Falmouth, they they're in a business condo, um, and they own all four of the business condo units and rent out three of them. <laughs> so uh, they they keep themselves financially fit that way. Uh, where's the other one? Hartford. They're in a they're right. You know, they're in the middle of Hartford, of course. Um, but they had just gotten the floor of a huge building uh, as a new facility. So I, I, I know Stoneham, that... Bought, we bought an old, uh, old, they bought a, an old church. Which I think there, there was one of those on our list of things to check out, too. And it's, <laughs> it was snatched up before we could actually uh, uh, yeah, place a bid on yeah. it or anything. Yeah, um, yeah and GCTV so. owns a condo in a downtown um, Main Street building location. Um, Montague rent, uh, currently rents a small unit in, again, a, a building that was recently renovated. But they're also looking at purchasing a former convenience store um, and renovating that for a facility. Um, Athol Orange uh, bought a Victorian that's just outside of the center of town right. and added a steel building behind it to act as their main studio, yeah. um, which is a, also a great option if, there's, if the possibility exists. Um, Palmer Ludlow rented or uh, purchased a, an in-town um, office building. And um, hey, Waitley Falls, might have Falls center. Cable exists at yeah. the uh, high school. Waitley Center School might be available at some time in the future. There you go. I'm just saying. There you go. Is it on the bus route? Yes. There you go. <laughs> Buy it for a dollar and spend a million and a half to rent it. I was going to, that's, sure. I mean, there's yeah. a reason why that price tag is likely to be a dollar. Yeah. Because it'll, yeah. it'll take a little renovating. Yep. So that's where we're at. But I would like the committee to please keep yeah. that in mind that we are continuing to look at options and I would like to make sure that that's part yeah. of the discussion as we move forward. Yeah. And, and can I ask a question of maybe of Bill at the, and maybe this is better to put in another part, but how likely is Comcast to be um, sympathetic, for lack of a better word, to us wanting to retain some of the equipment money as savings toward a facility? Uh, because I mean, I, know, yeah. knowing that and, and having, you know... Uh, yeah, that's, that's, you know, I mean, everything has its reasons and 
Like, need, like, do we need to spend down? I mean, no. one idea was, what strategy was to spend this down because it, then it makes it look like we don't really need money. But if we spend it down, then we don't have a, a deposit for a, yeah, a building I know if you, that works. I know, but based on what you've done, you, you, yes, you, that's a shorthand way of saying you have a lot of needs. And the question is, do you meet them now or do you wait till you get your new license and put that money together? So that's really the, 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 the question. Right, And yeah. I think that the answer is that um, – it, it should be reality driven so that if there are um, if you, you clearly need a new studio and in order to have a new studio you, you're going to you're going to need a significant amount of dollars and it, it certainly yeah. some of the dollars you have could go to that you know we're document you can obviously documented that by you should always document what you when yeah. you look what you're doing yeah. it's not didn't come up at the last minute <clears throat> so that i think that's okay on the other hand if, depending on how much what the funds are, if there are needs you have now, uh, and it's the right time to buy that, let's say a certain HD equipment, uh, it may or yeah. may not be, but you feel for some reason there's something available that, yeah. that that meets your needs now, you know, go ahead and do it. But I think really reality driven. But um, yes, I mean, uh, does, does Comcast run its business? That it uh, it's, it 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 uh, has a certain capital that it uses for something. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I didn't look at the details of how they bought NBC, but I bet <laughs> it wasn't all on a loan. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, we would just point to how I, any good corporation is run is that you, you have money <clears throat> in the bank to do important things that you need yeah. to do. Just uh, Okay. Uh, so uh, I'm so, okay with that. So, so having was, the facility uh, as a part of the discussion, whether <clears throat> it means uh, this money that we've set aside, we want to have that as a reason for retaining it and asking for more, or whether it's going to be kind of a combination Yeah, I mean, they can of, always, you can, uh, a government affairs people are pretty good. I mean, you have someone who's simple who might say, oh, you have this money, you don't need it, and we're going to say, oh, that's not the case, and we're going to explain yeah. you know, why. So we clearly, need, you need a new studio, and you've clearly been looking for that, and I've had a number of discussions with Doug, including being over there and seeing that you need yeah. a, a new studio. Um, so that's, that, that's fine, and I wouldn't, ne I never would spend money Simply because it, it may, right. the other side might wrongly use that as a basis not to give you a fair license. Okay. So right. having money, question, having okay, money good. in the that's bank, going into negotiations isn't necessarily a detriment, assuming we have a plan that we can demonstrate and document yes. yeah. for the use of that money. Absolutely. Yeah. We, I think that's, so we go. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's kind of what I thought the answer yeah. was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Yep. Okay. Can, can you describe for me the current facility? Oh, yeah, I think we have to take you there. <laughs> um, the current facility is about 16 feet wide, about 15 feet long, subdivided into three separate rooms. Um, it's essentially what some might call a railroad car apartment. One room, one room, one room, interconnected in a line. Um, the front area serves as reception area, editing bays, and equipment check-in and check-out. It's about 16 by 14 total space. Yeah. Um, the middle section area is about 16 by 30 and serves as a studio space, fairly open area um, with very, not enough room for cameras, yeah. sets, lights, things like that. And the back area is about 16 by 12 and serves as our broadcast center, our computer racks, uh, our network interconnection, our control room for the studio, storage, kitchen, and uh, mop closet, <laughs> all in a 12 by 16 space. Um, the building is poorly insulated, so it, on a sunny day, on a cold winter day, the front room will get to 80 degrees, the studio will be at about 68, and the back control room will be at about 58. On a summer day, uh, even with the air conditioning running, it never gets below 74 degrees in the front room, and if I don't show up there at 9 in the morning having the air conditioning going, um, it'll be 90 by 11 o'clock in the morning in that room. It's a solarium. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've got so, you know, we've got various you know passive things there to help take you know take care of the the, the white curtains. Um, uh, what else have we done? And, and right. Leo actually put in new windows. The windows are actually in good shape, but the walls are still not not that right. well insulated. <laughs> but just in essence, the space is too narrow for an adequate studio. Um, and if we want to do the things which we're trying to do now with production classes and with uh, maintaining the cable cast and with doing studio production, there isn't enough space to do any of those things simultaneously. Um, it's just not possible, unfortunately. Yeah. You can't get to the control room without going through the studio. Um. <laughs> so, so, so if someone's working in the front room on the schedule and there's a problem with the server, but there's a, show, a shoot going on, then they have to wait until the end of the shoot to reset the server or something right. like that. 
Exactly. There are good things about it. It's not all bad. The, you yeah. Know, it, you know, it has good access to Frontier, you yeah, know, it's regional right down, school. Yeah, it's right down sure, the street. Absolutely. Downtown. Absolutely. It's right across the street from a very good pizza place. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and generous at that. They send over pizzas yep. for the crew that does the football yep. every so yep. often. And yep, yep. Now and again, yep. yep. And being physical, uh, physically located in, you know, on that area, on Elm Street, close to Maine, is great. Yeah. Having a bright, well visible, you know, uh, well. Uh, so is that visible, visible presence? Down the middle, is that what I'm yeah. hearing? Yeah. Yeah. What's on the other That's side right. of the building? Leo's. Uh, Leo's TV. Oh, he's still in business? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, did, I didn't know they were still in business. Um, oh, well, yeah. and, and that's also something else which we have talked about, and I even dropped a, a hint at Leo, and I said, because he recently went to appointment hours only, and I said, so, you know, and asked him why, we talked a little bit about his, how his business is going, and I said, would you ever be renting out the other side of this building to someone? He said, I might consider it. Um, and so in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, could this work? Mm-hmm. Boy, that staircase right up the middle, it's hard to imagine. There'd well, be a lot that's of renovation. Difficulty. One side of the building, the other side of the building, and then the middle of the building, which is staircase going up the center. And those two walls on either side of the staircase are supporting walls. They can't be removed. Yeah. So no matter what, you're not going to get more than a 16-foot wide space in that, in that facility. We could add space for offices. But the stairs don't go front to back, do they? they nearly, very nearly. Oh, really? That oh. middle door, it goes back 10 feet, and then the stairs go up. Um, and but you yeah. were, I was just doing the math as you went along. You've got 12 feet in the back, you've got 30 feet, and then you've got uh, how many feet in the front? So, I mean, it sounds like you've got, a, you've got about 50 foot of depth to that building. In yeah, overall. about 50 feet, yeah. 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 yeah I don't know, it might be, yeah, it's 48 or 50. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, there's that. Um, and none of the building is ADA compliant, which is the other problem. Yeah. So, if we began to renovate, we would need to put in... And I yeah, assume there's a second building. floor to that, right? Apartments. Two separate apartments. I see. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. So. so there's that. Um, the last thing I have on my list, and I, I know I'm hogging the meeting. No, it's okay. Um, yeah. Some things that I, uh, I became aware of at a recent meeting that I attended, it was from Mass Access. Uh, we talked a little bit about things to keep in mind uh, when going into the contract negotiations, um, and this might be just me bouncing these ideas off of Bill, um, the taking them out of order on the agenda, um, the cable uh, institutional network buyout that we've been talking about. I'm now <coughs> pretty much convinced that that makes sense to relieve Comcast of the burden of maintaining the coax INET. Um, in exchange for a cash sum buyout. That makes a lot of sense. Um, there are more and more options becoming available. Even if we don't do some kind of fiber-based network, there's more and more options available that make more fiscal sense to, uh, in, to being able to get our video back hauled back to a central storage unit or our server, um, whether that be um, uh, streaming uh, services that we can purchase, so on and so forth. Um, but I'm pretty much convinced that that does make sense. It also means that we could, at remote locations, be shooting in high definition, backhaul that HD signal to our home base, record that HD signal onto servers or onto other devices, um, and then be able to stream that live from our central location. Um, mm. With just whatever digital delay there with is. Whatever, yeah, there would be a digital delay of anywhere from 5 to 30 seconds. And this network is owned by Comcast now? <coughs> they built it? I'm, uh, oh, the cable, yes, the institutional network is owned by Comcast. And you're proposing we buy it from them and own it? And uh, No, we wouldn't buy it from them. They would buy out their responsibility for maintaining it. It's, that's my understanding. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, I, don't, oh. I, I think we're one of the first to do that, yeah, that, it, that they would provide dollars to the, uh, to the towns and, you know, access provider. <clears throat> in order for the, yeah. uh, the, those, those institutions to do a replacement, so we call it an INET yeah. buyout. I see. It runs a gamut of different variables in terms of dollars. It depends on what you need to do. I mean, I think one of the things I'll talk about when we get to my, my area is uh, looking at, uh, and I've asked Brian to look at the cost of the fiber connection just for peg access for your return. So we have that, what that cost is. And then you know, look at other options. Also, I, I, I know that folks have different opinions as to whether the non-fiber cable solution 
is mm -hmm. something that, that that's reliable enough that has good enough quality um, and we can look further into that I know these guys have some ideas other people have other ideas so um, but that that would be the, the concept and typically if, and is, is the full one of the questions I had is not everything in theory is the return from the town hall obviously fiber um, let me tell you what we had in the, in the license here here's this is Deerfield's license and it says that um, buildings which are 10,000 feet or less from the head end can be passed from coax fiber. Buildings which are greater than 10,000 can be fiber. That's what the license says as to whether that was done. And we'll go over. So one of the things we're going to go over today is let's, let's compare the license to what they did. Let's see what, what was done, what was, wasn't done. And then at the same time, we'll have, I think, Brian Hopkins look at fiber video return only not interconnecting the towns but getting every getting everyone back to whatever the point may be which yeah. the studio which is up in the air uh, as and, and so we understand what that cost is yeah the risk of course is that you you buy the network the physical network yourself and then you well, you can't just call comcast up and say hey it's not working get yeah. it working and, the, and that's i guess i'm guessing then that you're saying now it might make sense that that risk is something that's more I don't know, calculable? Right. <laughs> Something I mean, that you part can of it actually... is, again, you can hear from these guys, uh, tech guys, and you'll have your own folks you speak to in your own background. You're both very knowledgeable. As you know, fiber, uh, unlike coax, you don't have the modulators. Uh, typically, nothing goes wrong unless it gets knocked down. Uh, and yeah. then you can have insurance for, you know, for that. Uh, I mean, we just, had a, we just had a tree go down, down the street. Yeah, and power went out, and everybody came out and fixed it right away. If that happened to yep, whatever it becomes an issue. Yep, that's it becomes right. an yep. issue. And there, yeah. there are contract. You can get some contract prices for what would the maintenance be if you do a, a maintenance contract. So you can build that into like an annual cost. So it's not it's not for every community that that uh, yeah. uh, plenty of communities where you look at it and the the dollars are not going to be sufficient. It has no and it doesn't have any. It, it's, it's there's not enough upside and the continuation by Comcast of. And in our case, we would argue the build if it's not working well, which we'll talk about, build build something new, or to improve it would be a better better road. So if you want to look at it in a, in a, in a detailed mm -hmm. way, yeah. and the first thing you do is get that price for what it'll cost, so you can see whether it's even in the ballpark. Does Comcast not want to maintain that network yeah, today? They, well, they don't want to maintain. Yeah, they, they've they're getting out of they got out of the INET business, so to speak, in most places. And they've also had people who've retired, so they have less interest in maintaining anything. And they have particularly less interest in, in maintaining a uh, something that has a lot of coax and modulators because it's time consuming, it's hard to get the parts, and so therefore that they, <coughs> they prefer to get, they, to get out of. We would still require Comcast <coughs> to maintain the fiber link between essentially Deerfield Town Hall and the head end um, up on uh, Route 5, so that that last link, if you will, in the chain is maintained by them can you know now but mm -hmm. the idea would be all the coax would be removed from their plate um, in exchange for cash so and you know some sometimes they they're more uh, it is a time where they're more interested than others that can switch at different times it depends who you're dealing with but when we talk when, I, when we, we want to get the cost for that so we understand what it would be a fiber based as Doug said look at what those alternatives might be so far no, I, I, plus, as I've worked with, you know, prefer sticking with something that's hardwired, that's secure, that doesn't, uh, um, that, 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 that they can use going forward. And, of course, then the other issue was, again, the dollars aren't probably there. If you end up building that, this is why I have the town look at a full fiber system for the towns, and then and you get a 9 buyout, then, then, then you have an additional cost to build from there if you wanted to connect other buildings. And so that's why... You know, in some, some places it might not, it might be pretty much a wash as to who would, would, maybe it's even more difficult in a sense to take it over rather than have Comcast run it. But if the benefit is you're getting 30% or 50% of your future municipal fiber system, then it makes sense to do that and you can build the rest later. So I'll put it on my list of things to do uh, to contact Comtrack about a revised estimate for a fiber network that exactly mirrors the current INET? Well, I, I spoke um, to Brian. I, I, what I would say is that <coughs> with that mirror, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> that reflects <coughs> where you need to be uh, now and going forward. So you may have some buildings on the current uh, list 
or network that you say don't need anymore, and you can have other buildings. Sure. Uh, as I look at it, I don't see a lot that aren't yeah. needed. Uh, and you, um, uh, then you'll have some buildings that are needed maybe going forward. Uh, and again, the other key is typically you'll want to return it to the studio. And so there's a timing issue on that, mm -hmm. depending on not knowing where the studio is. Right. Sure. Yeah. OK. Um, a few other bits of language that I want to make sure that is in the contract. One is, um, and I don't claim to know everything about this, but it seems to make a lot of sense, is some language that basically guarantees um, specific bandwidth for our channels. Um, not necessarily just that we've got channel 12 or 15 or 23, but that specific bandwidth is allocated. Um, and again, there was a lot of conversation at this particular conference that I didn't quite understand. But they basically said you want to make sure they set aside a minimum amount of spectrum mm -hmm. for your signal and that your signal be allocated to all of that. If, if you know, because you can take six megabits per second or you can take two megabits per second or you ta it can take 1100, 1,100 kilobits per second, each of those will transmit video, but you know which one is going to look much better, yep. uh, the one that has a bigger pipe to walk through. Um, so, I yep. mean, I, I, oh, I'm relying I mean, on your experience a little bit here, but sounds exactly I mean, like something yeah, I think we <laughs> do want to try to make sure that we get Whereas before, in previous contracts, they would they would say that you know you need to have a certain number of access channels for every channel, for the amount of channels that the cable system provides. For every 24 channels that the cable system provides, one channel has to be set aside for public <clears throat> access. I mean, I want to basically ensure that we're getting the same bandwidth as any other channel that's on the on the uh, on the network, if possible. Well, I have two thoughts. Um, one is that you know we, as we and we'll talk about the process here and doing fairly quickly. Uh, whatever the committee representing the towns decides is going to be, you know, as long, as long as there's no disagreement by the selectmen, in which I don't, I know you work closely with the boards and members and cases, that um, that that'll be the, the, the position we take with Comcast. And our position with Comcast is going to be, we're, you know, we're going to mean what we say and say what we mean. So that uh, that's the most effective way to negotiate, for instance, mm -hmm. on capital dollars. You, you know, you don't say, well, well let's go ask them for a, let's go ask them for a million because we really want a half million. That that's not an effective way to negotiate, particularly with a you know a, 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 given the relationship. The effective way to do it is to be very substantive as we're doing, and you've done, and we did last time, and <clears throat> and uh, to keep in mind you know parameters that are reasonable, but but to make sure we're we're covering all your needs. So with that in mind, here's my thoughts on that issue, that. You know, licenses used to say like three channels, six megahertz <laughs> channels. Sure. But then, the, as you know, as there was compression and digital channels are different, uh, you know, it, it stopped saying that, and cable companies, you know, would be okay, less wanting, wouldn't want to say what those megahertz are. Now, there are uh, there are also the other issues of where, for instance, where the peg channels are located, for how long they stay in the basic tier. And I think they should stay there as long as yeah, the basic tier is legally required or otherwise even provided if it's not legally required. Mm -hmm. the basic tier, you mean first two 99 13, or two th oh, uh, or, I mean, or, I, or, I, I think it goes go. up to like 22 or something like that uh -huh. in this area, basic uh, tier. I hope it goes to 23 because that's one of our channels. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, 23, <laughs> 25, something like that. Because otherwise, they get places they want to have to put some digital and not, and we want to be in, the, you know, we, even though they're all digital, we want to. You know, we we want to have a basic tier, as and that's as defined not exactly the channels, but it's defined differently in federal law. Um, you know, we will talk a little bit about HD, and um, there I think my right general recommendation is uh, I'd like to get a not left behind letter saying we're doing a license now, but we don't want to be left behind. And mm -hmm. there are different ways you can say that. I have one. Um, so on the on the megahertz, well, I assume we're not HD now. Correct. They don't, they We're don't. not even standard definition. Oh, is that right? Okay. It, it, I can switch between, and, and again, I'm just on the basic tier because that's all we get over at the station. Yeah. I can switch between our channel and the next one down, whether it's Univision or whatever it is. It's still an analog channel. It's not a digital channel. And the difference in quality between us and them is astounding. And you attribute it most of the, generally attribute it to the video return. Um, but true, but even after <laughs> having two technicians yeah. go through all of the, the right. drops, 
it's still it's it's horrible. Well, um, one of the things we might do is have it tested. You know, they have to allegedly meet FCC standards, so that's one thing we could look at is the testing wow. of the uh, uh -huh. testing of the uh, channels. So on the six, on the megahertz, that's been a goal that people have spoken about, and the idea then would be if you have a certain number of megahertz, you could actually have even more channels because you wouldn't necessarily have to use all the megahertz yeah. in one channel. Yeah. One, the, the channels. Um, so my challenge to anyone who said other mass access is, is show me where they have it in a license. Um, and I think the answer is I, I could be wrong. I tend to look at a lot of licenses. I, I don't know. I haven't seen that in a license. Mm. So that doesn't mean we can't get it, that we don't prioritize something to be important enough. But I think as we right. go along, we'll take some of these issues and, and then we'll prior, you'll prioritize them in terms of importance and we'll say some things we, gotta, you know, we have to have and other things we're going to yeah. talk about. And so that's one I would put in. Uh, I think you need, uh, need a little more background. And firstly, is if, if there's a license where it's been agreed to. We want a copy be, of it. It'd be great <laughs> for whoever spoke, said that to point it out. OK. Um, I can then, get that. And then beyond that, then I think well, I'll talk to uh, uh, my tech, one of my tech guys uh, uh, about, about the issue of, of, of the, 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 the quality of the digital of the channels with less megahertz because I do think there's, there's, again, there's two reasons to look at it. One would be we want um, uh, we uh, we want to make sure that, that each channel is sufficient quality, and if there's the capacity issue there, we want that. And the second issue is is it or is it just a way to potentially have more channels? If it's a way to potentially get more channels, my sense is that our best bet, as we talk about this license, if there's a need for another channel, for instance, in some yeah, places, to ask discuss for it. arts, okay. culture, and events channel that's run by the Access Corp. In places like the Vineyard, uh, now in Salem, we're going to we've discussed it, where where it's kind of geared to the arts, culture, and events. It does it's people who live there, but obviously there's also times and places that have tourism. Uh, Deerfield has, and Sunderland, Deerfield particularly, you know, has a lot going on. There's the uh, <coughs> old Deerfield. There's a lot of cultural things. There are a lot of um, a lot of local economy things. There's agriculture. There's crafts. So that's some one thing we should talk about, whether there's the, and that would have to be, you know, whether it be run by the Access Corp. There's cost in, involved in that. So that's the way I would deal with the other channel. I think that if, it's, if, it's, if the goal is to get an additional channel, my guess is it's easier to get an additional channel than it is to fight about the bandwidth issue if we don't need bandwidth for clear channel and, and sound. Okay. Right now, uh, right now we have three channels in, a, in each town. And there's channel 12 and channel 23, which FCAT uh, controls, and those two channels are seen in all four towns. There's channel 15, which is independently controlled by each town. Government, right. And in Waitley and in Conway, those are simply a bulletin board. And in Sunderland and in Deerfield, that's very, very intermittent programming with a bulletin board. But um, through a server on both of those. Sunderland, Deerfield, that signal is provided by a Latronics. Uh, or, um, yeah, yeah, sure. Through, but they're, they're not programmed necessarily. Right, they're not necessarily programmed. Um, they're right. essentially set aside. And in, on all the channels 15, if there's a live cable cast, that's where it goes. Now, yeah. we've got, to be blunt, um, it's not a matter of getting more channels. Um, I can't program channel 23. I don't have enough programming to allocate to channel 23. And on channel 12, we've got 24-7 programming. We're doing okay, but we're repeating programs three and four times a week. Um, <coughs> so there's that. Right. Um, whether that's going to be continue to be the case, I don't know. Right. But we've also got about, I would say, between 60 and 80% of our program is coming from outside of our, our service area. Well, you know, it depends so. what the goals are. And um, like I yeah. said, for instance, in a place... I never agree to a formula for another channel. Comcast would like to say, well, if, eight, if you have 80% of the time you have original programming, not, not bulletin board and not repeated, and say, well, you know, like CNN. I mean, so if you, need a, if you want and have a desire for an arts, culture, and entertainment channel, you know, those are the prime hours other times, too. It, the fact that you, you, know, you don't have programming on your, on, your, on your access channel at 2 in the morning, who cares? So I sure. think that what we should yeah. do here is think about whether... And, and, and by the way, this is a place that, would, as you say, would have so much programming that, there, and also a dividing of sort of the free speech and the public. Let's make it first the the, the events, the arts, the culture, and things like that. And it may well have no no need. So we're going to look at the bandwidth issue. We're going to yeah. figure out if 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 there if there's a need 
to or desire to, to, to have that in the license for purposes of quality apart from meeting FCC standards, apart from everything else. If there's a reason to do that for quality, then I think we take the position we need that in there. If we yeah. don't need it for quality, yeah. then if it's only there because we like the idea of more channels, it's probably, right. to me, it's much lower than HD would be. Right. Yeah. No. I, I think that more channels. You're not is, pushing for more channels. I don't, I don't, I don't want more channels. Yeah. I would give yeah. up the second channel. I would give up 23 <laughs> if I could get better quality on 12. And I agree with you. When I go to look at channel 12. It looks like crap. It's terrible. It looks like crap. Well, I think and, what we need to do, I really think we should have the, the channels. And Greg Hall, who works with me, I had him out last time. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> have him come out and uh, we'll call Comcast. We'll, uh, we'll have him test the channels yeah. and uh, at different locations. Yeah. Uh, first, we've, uh, we might even, if, if you have, and we'll discuss today where the, you know, where the video return works or does, you know, is, is hooked up and where it isn't. And if there's some places you think that there's bad quality, we can have them test the channel. The, Programming uh, just on a set, we can have them test the video return in places, so we have a report to say if it works or doesn't work, and that all leads to a better discussion of the INET buyout. A lot easier because I'm a Christmas future guy to say, you know, let's not argue about Christmas past. You know, it is what it is. We all agree it's not working. Let's go to Christmas future. Yeah. Either we need you to build this, or we need you to give us this dollars so we can do it. But I believe anybody that looks at FCAT today, this, oh, well, yeah, that's FCAT, you know, it's like, and right. I don't know if they blame it on you, Doug, or blame it on this no, video. No, that's important. But, people will stop looking. The young people, generation is not going to look at it. They're absolutely. Not turn it on. That's Just right. Just go right by it. That's yeah. right. Right. Yeah. We, um, we, I mean. And, not, and they wouldn't blame it on Comcast, is what I'm saying. You know, right. th that would be the, that would be the last. Yeah. No, they, they just they think that that's a, the extent of our production capability. Right. right. Yeah. And right. I mean, we, we are at a point now where we're actually shooting everything in HD. Yeah. We're not shooting in standard definition anymore. We're not editing in standard definition right. anymore. And the programs that we put up to our video on demand look fabulous. Um, the programs that go out on channel 12. Well, it, it, it proofs in the point of that, right. Like that's right. And, and, and that's right. And, and, who, you know, and, and this is something both sides want to work at. I mean, yeah. who wants a little flag at the bottom of every, every program saying, you know, that the. The Com Comcast is, is responsible for quality. 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 That doesn't, yeah. that doesn't no. work for either If you want a better quality, us. go ahead and look at our Comcast, video on demand. Right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 you know, they care. It's their system. I give them credit. They care. They're, yeah. they're technologically very proficient. Yeah. It's just a question of really just, you know, bringing it to their attention and, and, and pushing it if yeah. you need a little push. So I, I have confidence that they'll, uh, they'll, they'll come to the plate on that. And let's, so let's make that a priority issue to do yeah. now. Yeah. I mean, if, if we're talking about setting priorities, the first priority for me will be Improving the quality of our cable cast through whatever means possible. Right, but let's and just if, do that now. In other words, wait. Let's this, let's do that now. Let's. But, let's but so your interest is: should we put something in the in the contract that would right. specify that? Whatever or, mechanism makes or, sense. Or, right, but that's that's yeah, why this sure. is here. Um, and and it, again, if that means that we have to provide Comcast with a different kind of signal, if we have to give them a digital um, uh, signal, even if it's only standard definition. I don't care. Um, and if we have to buy the equipment, let's buy the equipment. If, if it has to be done separate from the contract, I don't care. Yeah, That's right. my first priority is, is ensuring that the quality of the programming that we are producing doesn't get lost in, in literally in the translation between us and yeah. Comcast. So let's look at that. I mean, right, you know, typically uh, you, you write this different ways, but now Section 6.7, which is typical, the license shall monitor the peg access channels for technical quality and shall ensure they maintain its standards commensurate with those which apply to cable systems and commercial channels. So, um, I mean, that's, that's there now. So, let two prongs, that's right, let's look at now, do something now, and then we'll, we'll figure out what, what the paradigm would be okay. for going forward. Greg Hall is with who? He's a, con he's a contract contractor who I worked, I, he worked with me here last time. Uh, I, I, his name seems in, familiar. Hampshire. Very okay. good guy, very bright, speaks English, nice, nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> And when I say this big thing, I always say, I don't mean to say, sir, people, I mean he doesn't, doesn't, doesn't speak talk tech. tech talk. He doesn't yeah. talk tech. I said, I'm sorry, that's all I got. I, I, I want to say, <laughs> I'm wondering if I met with him and Vice Wilson already. I don't know if that was Greg no, that I met with. No, it wasn't with, no, somebody else, yeah. It was somebody else. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, um, but he worked last time, and he works, he's really good, and. Uh, let's let's set that up as soon as possible. Yeah, we um, can do that, yeah. And the cost, he'll, give, he'll give an estimate of what that cost will be, but he's very, he's, yeah. he's very cost effective. Okay, okay. Um, and if we can measure, you know, the quality of a signal leaving here, which is, this is the last step before we hit fiber, this building, yeah. a quality of the signal here uh, versus signals that are remotely transmitted that come to here. Yeah, that's right. Then, he, he you know, we'll we measure all those things. Check. And, and, and it does a great, good report. Yep. Okay. okay. So what else do we have on the mass access here on that list? 
Um, I'm sorry. Let me go back to that list. Uh, the INET buyout, bandwidth requirements or quality requirements, whatever. Um, the only other things I had right now on that list is um, the X guide um, inclusion, which I know we've been talking about. Whether whether FCAT can get its schedule included in the um, the regular cable TV guide. Right, electronic program. The electronic guide, program yeah. guide, and that's that's something that can get figured out. Um, well, I always say, I, I always say, and who said that? Uh, but the reason, because I, I think I'm the only. I think only you one. said that. I, actually, no, I wasn't yeah. there. I wasn't there. But um, I was, was going to be there. I was invited uh, to speak, right. but I was too. But busy. Chuck Sherwood actually has oh, mentioned Chuck, it okay, independently. Yes, that's right. Yeah, um, we, we got and, that. I got that in the vineyard. Yeah. Now, the vineyard's different though, because uh, on a side letter, but the vineyard is has its own, you know, head end only the vineyard, and yeah. so their challenge, they say, which I, I think is you know, except, is that if there are multiple towns and everyone it, that it, it, it can be more difficult. But let's. I think I think that's something that 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 you've indicated before, Doug. That we need to discuss with them. Mm -hmm. We need them to say if they, you know, if if, if the head end that serves different towns, explain to us why that can't be done, and we can have folks look at that and say if that's correct, mm -hmm. you know. And I would I would argue <coughs> that it's I, for me, but it's your decision. I still have HD first, followed by electronic program guide, and now. Very much followed where it wasn't before by peg access video on demand on TV. The peg access video on demand um, integrated with Comcast system, um, that's so far down on my priority yeah. list because um, we've already got other options already in place and we've got investments in those options in terms of time and, and bandwidth already. Um, so to move that entire system. To a whole new yeah. Well, it would could be an addition to, but I but I do th right. I think an alternative. So that that I I no. sort of yeah because of the importance of HD and as the express importance of electronic program guide. Let's, sure. let's yeah. focus. Sure. Focus uh, on I'm right there with you. Um, the only other two things that I had were um, the uh, <coughs> completion of the cable plant uh, generally in uh, Deerfield and Sunderland specifically, right. um, and Waitley to some extent. Yeah, um, there's a, a tiny bit of Waitley. Yeah. Very small. Bit Let's of talk about the bill. You know, the, the, the new bill. Does that does that include? And no, least, no, doesn't include the town. So, so, I mean, there is a bond bill going through the going through the legislature that will provide funding that will build out what are referred to as the cable towns in the areas that um, we could say were the traditional wired west uh, sure. build areas or that that are the included the in the areas the considered have, to be un unconnected. Yeah, so, well, no, but not the towns that are totally unserved. Uh, so those towns are, are Conway, Shelburne, Buckland, Northfield, and Chester. Yeah. Maybe one more. Huntington, I'm not sure. And, and, and so, so those are towns that have a significant percent of their towns, 25%, 50% of their towns that, that are not built out. And those are the towns that are, have been explicitly um, left, out. Uh, <laughs> left out of the state's build. The state has come along and said, we're going to build a fiber last mile network in the traditional, what I'll call the Wired West region, okay. rather than have Wired West do it. But they're not going to be doing any building in any of the cable towns, and so so. The, what, what's the status of that for the not built towns? Have they have they committed dollars to build they've up? Committed forty to forty, <coughs> and then maybe plus five million of. No, the this most is for, for, the, for the towns that haven't been built out. What's what's been committed for that? For about forty million. Forty million, and then and maybe five <coughs> more in the recent change to the bill. So the bill has recently gone from forty million to fifty million. And of the 50 million, about 5 million of it is being earmarked to complete the build out in the um, towns th that have cable franchises. Right. And, and those are, don't include Deerfield and Waitley. And, right. And, and, right. Um, right. Because we're, pretty, we're over 90%. Close to I think they're complete. building. Yeah. <coughs> they're not going to build Bull Hill Road, as I understand it, in Deerfield, in, in Sunderland. Sunderland. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, I think All that right, was so one of here's what here, I, I understand that they that, that, that uh, they there was a requirement if certain things happened. I, I've heard that they're going you know, to they're they're talking to people about building it out now. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because, but, because they so were close to meeting those requirements. The key here so. is, and this is what we talked about last time, but th what, what I need from each town is, uh, if, let's go over what hasn't been built. I mean, does, there, does every town? We, we've got that information, though, don't we? I, do, I got a map of what was built out, okay. and I, I remember emailing it to you yep. for all okay. the towns. Could you, Joyce, or someone, could you then, 
with the map you got from Comcast. Can uh, you yeah. make a list, or could, whoever it's? I think Doug, Doug may be the central repository okay. of all that right so now. So could somebody make a list of which what roads in each town are not built? I'll have to take a look. Okay. I, I, I know there was at least one part of Hayden Road Road that's uh, somebody had was making a big stink out of it because they had to pay a certain amount for Comcast to come up Those their are, driveway and stuff. And they recently This was within the, la within the last year. They got connected. Oh, they are connected, yeah. So, <laughs> what was this built now? Uh, uh, well, uh, they, they go a certain distance out Haydenville Road, and there was, I don't know, two or three houses further that hmm. they didn't go, and one of those houses... Okay. So who paid who, who, a whole bunch of money to Comcast to get do that. Their so house. Who, who who would do this if I can ask? Uh, for Waitley, that would probably okay, be so me. Waitley, Joyce, yep. Um, Deerfield, and then someone's not here. Um, if you wanted for Conway, it would be me. But I'm don't know if that <laughs> matters in, in terms of this contract. Probably not. Yeah. yeah. And plus you're yeah. Conway, okay. one of the lucky ones. Yeah. Well, it, for a change now. Yes, yeah. good. That's right. Okay. All right, so if I could leave it to to assign Waitley. the other. Um, I think, and well, then we can give David his homework. Will be Dave Nixon. This, uh, Dave, uh, Dave, no, um, Pierce, Nixon, David, Pierce, David Pierce, Pierce from Pierce. Sunderland. Okay. And then, um, so which of our Maybe Deerfield Nixon, representatives um, wants to take that little homework assignment on for Deerfield. We've got a map from Comcast that shows where they're where they are. So mostly you have to look at the places where they're not and see if there are any houses there. You'd have to and you may have to like go compare to you, know, you, you might sit down with it if there's with your a town clerk or someone from the town clerk, office. Clerk, yeah. So oh, I'll give it a shot if you want. <coughs> okay. I've got oh, the map for Deerfield. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, I think I forwarded all of yeah. it to you, but I'm sure I have it on my computer at home. No, I've got the map for Deerfield. I can forward it right to you. Okay. That'd be good. Um, it's. Could I go ahead and get the map anyway? What's that? Oh yes, please. Yes. So I um, I'll just put that in the mail right now. Oops. Okay. Okay. Paul and Gregory. If you want me to work with you at all on it, let me know. Okay. Sure. Strand map. All right. Okay, and what you're going, to, you or collectively the two of you can do is is get information <coughs> about what's not currently wired and whether or not it can be or should be. Okay. Or, the, or if people living there would want it or not. Right. Okay. It you, might mean yeah. some phone calls to people on those roads, yeah. uh, if there are roads. <laughs> <laughs> if there yeah. are roads. Yeah. For, period, for yeah. example, I happen to know one of the roads. The only people who live on it don't yeah. care. Okay. <laughs> so, so that's one where I would just call them up again and see if they still don't care. Um, okay. For myself, uh, so so it's a it's a pretty straightforward job, and it's not a little percentage <coughs> of the town. Okay. It's something that really changes over time. Yes. People who didn't care a couple years ago. The, yes. May, may care now. May care now. Yeah. That's right. And that's. Uh, is, I know we're sort of um, moving over into. There was one other thing that I don't know if it needs to be included in contract or specified in the contract language. But uh, right now, um, Waitley and Conway's Channel 15 are. I would I would put them under underserved areas because we <coughs> don't have the money for a server. Uh, we would really love to be able to use one of the channels on our four-channel server out of FCAT. And we still can't take a signal from FCAT server and send it to Channel 15 in Deerfield, in in in, uh, in Waitley and Conway. We can't get a signal from um, your server. You can't. You he, can't. We can't get it to uh, Channel 15 in Waitley from FCAT server. Okay, and we so. we we had wanted that last time, and we thought we had it in the language, but, so it, but Channel 15 we didn't. does does not go from FCAT. To Waitley or Conway, Conway. Um, and what, it also does not go to Sunderland. Let me see if I can clarify this because the same thing is true in Sunderland. Yeah. yeah. Um, what we want is the primary channel 15 signal from Sunderland and Waitley to Oops. originate Oops. Sorry, sorry, yes, <laughs> originate at F at FCAT Studio. Channel 15. Yes, to on go, channel 15 for Sunderland go, to, and Waitley to go from FCAT. Correct. To we, Sunderland and Waitley. Uh, well, not to them, but well, one to Sunderland, one to Waitley. And right. <clears throat> Sunderland's channel 15 could originate here. Their live things interrupt it. Right. right. What I'd rather have is the remote oh. locations yeah. of Sunderland and Waitley also terminate at FCAT Studios, 
so that we become like a hub. Yeah. And therefore, we are able to control the switching of what actually is going out on what channel. Um, and I want to do this, I want to make sure that this can happen in all the towns. I'd love the same thing to be true in Conway. So if yes. a signal originates in Conway Town Hall, it comes to our hub, we switch it onto the channel that we would need right. it to go out that, on. It, whatever accomplishes that, because I yeah. think the one thing that they're sore about in Whiteley is that we're still using a 12-year-old Macintosh computer to generate anything that's not a live broadcast, um, because we don't have access to this server that we paid $8,000 towards um, so many years ago. Okay, so let me, one more time, uh, give it to me. So you want to have the, give it to me one more time. Channel 15 yeah. for Sunderland and Waitley yeah. originate at FCAT. Okay, and it does now for Deerfield? Does for Deerfield. Okay. And that's, that's it. Okay. And we, you know, you had called about this, and you were going to sit down with, uh, at that point, with Steve. And, you know, and because I have a full time job, yeah. that would be a full time job getting them to get us this particular okay. capability. So, uh, because, um, because there's no connection between, um, now when it says, and you want it to go to your subscribers. So, right, but, yeah. right. But talk to them. So it's going to be programmed there, or it's going to be programmed by you and go to them and then sent out? And you, and you didn't well, I, I don't know if I if do you have a pencil. I'd be I'd be happy to, with if, with with any capability. But we would like to be able to use the server because that gives us the ability. The server, to, FCAT server, FCAT server, because so, that's who, where who our meetings using, would right. be. So you're going to be programming these channels. The yes, it's, 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 I would be the volunteer right. who would be programming 15, it. Fifteen government channel, right? Yeah. And you're going to be programming them from. You want to do it from a certain place, or you want to do it remotely? How, how are you going to program that channel? Um, programming the channel can be done from, can be anywhere, done from anywhere because it's done remotely with the web interface. So, so you program, and, but the but, it, but it'll be hosted at FCAT. Yes, okay. I want and access to that hosted, server. Now it's hosted at the town hall, and that that goes straight to that's picked up, and that goes to the head, goes to their head end. Head, head ends where by the way again? Head ends. Uh, uh, Route five. Uh, Route five and ten next, to the, next to the Butterfly Museum in Deerfield. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, Remember, yeah. I remember that. I think so I today it goes from Waitley to the head end, and, and then it goes back out to, to the customers. So it's, so it's going to then be hosted at, at, at FCAT and yep. then go picked up there and sent to, picked up by Comcast to their head end and then go uh, to the subscribers. Yes. We would like to be able to break in for live broadcast by whatever technology. And currently, but currently uh, the, the public access programming from the studio goes to the subscribers. On channel 12 and on channel 23, it does, right. but and not on. T but we right. can't get a signal from FCAT Studios to channel 15 and Waitley. Why would that be? I mean, be because they drag their feet. Yeah. I, you know, I, I there was a time when I had like a week off, oh, and I yeah. called them every day, um, and they just knew I had a week off, so they dragged their feet, and then Those wanted to channels. charge six thousand dollars for, you know, something, and then when I said yes, we're willing to pay. <laughs> it, it just I don't have all day every day to keep chasing it down and uh, I thought it was something that would be in our contract but it apparently wasn't last time if it needs to be in the contract well, to make I mean, it happen you know that's the, that's my well, I mean it, and, and this it, is this it needs is to be in the contract this is a big weightly issue yeah. is, this, is this my is this mine uh, you're welcome to keep that if you oh, like. Oh, oh yeah, no, because I have one already. So yeah. that's uh, yeah. But no, the, you can keep that back. Uh, page so if you want. Yeah. One of the, let me just take a quick look at the license. Can I ask a question? This may not even be relevant to this, but um, is there anything in the thing that says that if we had a an outage like we did two years ago on Halloween, mm -hmm. is what what's their responsibility to keep the phone service working in homes that have it? That's defined by the FCC, isn't it? Yeah, yeah we, I don't know. Don't that have, I'm just curious because they, they, you know, they, their, their internet and their phone fails after so many yeah. hours. They it's don't. It's not have, like the phone system. It doesn't have the same yeah. backup. But and, they're becoming and, more and like a phone they're, system. They are. They're, they're, and I know they do. They have more backup now and more emergency power. The old days licenses used to talk about cable emergency power. Um, so, um, but that's you know it's something we can raise. It be, oh, it's just something I'm, I'm cable, seeing. It. But we don't have the because we don't have the jurisdiction over over non cable. Uh, you tend to stay away from that. Um, oh, okay. And, All right. Just curious because I've seen I've seen it happen. And people are just sitting out there with no phone service yeah, unless they the old the old you know, you know the old AT and T. Mm -hmm. You know, it built differently. You know. Built, yeah. Oh, that's the thing. 
let me just take a quick look at this here. Do you know how Conway's go? How our programming gets from our I town think hall? same as Waitley. Uh -huh. It goes I, it goes down to the head end and, and, and then right. and then back out from there to the subscribers. Right. So we uh, the I mean the way they're labeled anyways. We, there's two little RF cable outlets on the wall. One of them says TV, which is the one that you can see what's being broadcast, and the R is the return. So that's yeah. The, the other direction. The license had two ch two channels and a third if requested. The third yeah. gave you just requested it. Was that how it occurred? Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Um, I'll probably have to go in uh, two thirty. So um, uh, I, I'll yeah. just go over the issues I see. Uh, yeah. All very good. Okay. Um, all right. So one is that we uh, you know I want to have a, a full capital plan we talked about <clears throat> there there appear to yeah. be some things here in terms of the areas of capital and the editors yeah. or other equipment so did uh, what I usually ask Chuck to do is to come up with a full capital plan going forward I, I don't know yeah if, uh, these folks came in do, do they did they do a full capital plan for you no they basically looked at just the remote locations which was a result of a conversation that this committee had some months back where we talked about needing to spend down the existing capital yeah. and again I just now we don't the necessarily records. need the to spend down part do that. is that and we I remember discussing yeah. at the time yeah, right we don't just so no one misconstrues it it, it right. means that that you have needs now and the question is again whether you're going to spend it now or whether you're going to wait to make some decisions you know you don't know where the studio is going to be so there uh, uh, and you know the town hall in your yeah, instance in our so case, yeah. there's always decisions about you know timing that you make and the issue is, well, well it, there may be th things we need now, but that the timing's not right. Is that a problem in terms of a, a re renegotiating a license? And the answer then is the same as the answer now. <clears throat> you know, it's called, it all should be reality-based. And if, you, if there's not, a, not the time to buy, it's not a good price, it's getting cheaper, there's better equipment, you don't know if you're going to be here. If all those reasons are stopping you from spending for things you need, then you just, as you articulated well before, uh, you just wait until that time is right, and yeah. I'm, I'm not yeah. concerned that uh, that 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 the, 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 the even yeah. a knee-jerk response won't could be responded to in a thoughtful way and say, hey, here's the reasons why uh, we we're, here's the plan, and here's the reasons why we haven't spent it yet. On the other hand, if it's if you got something you need to replace and yeah. it's not a bad, you know, you know, if you're me, you never buy anything because it's always it's always getting better and cheaper, and then you end up <laughs> never having it. So don't be me. Do better than me. Um, all right, so that's. Um, I'm told we can't do any better than you. <coughs> Good, I appreciate that. <laughs> so then, in that area, you can though. So, um, so we want to have that done, and I worked with with like, uh, Gary Pink of the camera company recently. I remember there's an issue, but I think we we'll try to meet. Let's have a contact with Gary Pink and Chuck, and let's have him come out if he would. Gary and Pink from okay. To the camera company, let him do work with you because I mean you're on top of this uh, it, to come up with the rest of the capital plan. Okay. Uh, that, that we need. Um, yeah. uh, I know you've put together, uh, Doug, and we went over, and I'll look, I need to look at you know, the, the, the program <clears throat> now and going forward. Um, I, I know you're going to update that even further at one point. I'm not sure if you did. But what I'd like to do is see if we, if, and, and, and Gary Pink is working on a lot of different things now, but I would like to see if we can have him come out you know, within two weeks. Uh, you, you review again all the great work you've done on the program now and going forward and um, at the same time we uh, you can have your list of buildings that you need to originate from so look at every yeah. town look at your <coughs> list now and put down is there something that the, the fire station in Sunderland do we oh yeah fire we, station and wait is also we not connected broadcast from these folks and let's, let's, let's right. say to Comcast these don't have to be here these are the ones we need. Need. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we'll get contract to, which I talked to Brian. He can do very quickly to give us, the, and if he has to do some more work, to give us the cost for going to those locations. And I'd like to see if we could, you know, even potentially meet with uh, the Comcast rep. And I apologize, and Ed. I apologize. I met him once, but I forget, the local rep. Me. Yeah, that's um, Henry and, and uh, Shapiro. No, no. Um, I might have that information. I met him once. Nice guy. You mean Steve's replacement? Yes. Aaron Saunders? Aaron yes, Aaron Saunders. Saunders there yes. It is. Aaron Saunders. And it started with an S. I'd like to see if we can. 
time's a little tight on things, but <clears throat> well, it, it, December might not be doable, but um, I like the goal of having sort of all the tasks we've had here just finished up in December, so that if, if it turns out we're early enough in December, we, we, we call Aaron up and we sit down with him uh, to go over, here's our paradigm of getting, doing the license. So, so the, you, you, I know you have the great notes. Those are the things we do. F finish the capital plan. Uh, see if there's anything you have to add to your, uh, your, uh, your, your uh, document on the past, the present, and the future, um, which includes your program now and your personnel and all those things going forward. Um, separately, um, speak, to, speak to Greg Hall about testing, although that doesn't have to happen before we meet with Aaron, testing the, uh, uh, the, the, peg, the, the cable system and the peg channels, um, list, listing the, the access return locations. And when we put that together, then we're, I think we're ready to sit down uh, with, with Comcast and Aaron. And as we discussed before, your meetings are on TV. Uh, and they were when I first came out, they are now. And <clears throat> so that uh, I think the, the, what we have two possibilities. Uh, I think, I think it's a good forum to meet. I mean, you know, I, as an Amherst, when the meetings were on TV, when Comcast used to come to the negotiate, come to the internal meetings, which are public meetings and open, and then when they came to negotiate, TV's there. That's, that's, that's the way you do it. I think that's fine. I think um, uh -huh. I think you know the other alternative, uh, and I probably less I, I, <coughs> uh, less uh, suggested on my part. But you know, if there was a terrible diversion, we could say, all right, well, we'll meet with you. But you know, if, if it turns out that we think you know these need to, we, we, with less people, we can negotiate with less than the full committee. Um, <coughs> and this will be up to you. We don't, we don't have to decide it now. And, yeah. and oh, then well. if, we, if we do that with less than the, sort of the full committee, then. That you know, we're prepared to meet with you outside of being on television because we don't televise that. Uh, we we haven't had those meetings. But then, if we don't get to a deal, then you know we think we need the full committee to be a part of that discussion. And those meetings are on TV. That's because that's the way it's done that's here. The, it's done in Amherst, and I, that's the most public and open way. So I think we, if we could maybe think about meeting, you know, it gets again holidays tough, but maybe toward mid December or so and we just can just like two or three come back to yeah. see to see if we're uh, to, to, to put, put all these parts together and to see what's what's left to be done um, it's definitely on our agenda to schedule another meeting in the next two to three weeks yeah. um, mid December is good for me because classes are out right. um, the, the other so thing, I can come during the day <laughs> the other thing that we need to throw out there or that I need to throw out there is that I've been advised that we really should have a public hearing in each of the three towns um, an opportunity for the pub public to provide commentary on the oh. cable system in general, public <clears> access, <throat> whatever, um, and that that would definitely make sense to have that before going in. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, again, different people do it differently. Okay. Um, uh, bring, yeah. bring that person before me and tell me who they are, because I, 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 my recommendation generally is not is to do it this way. You know, there's a lot of outreach here. You're, you know, I know... Um, uh, you're speaking to a, a, a choice. A yeah. lot of people. You're speaking to a ton of people. You know, no, no one here lives in a like a, a cocoon of not getting a lot of feedback from folks, both from the town, everyday residents, sure. access yeah. people. So that I, I don't view uh, a public hearing without a purpose as being beneficial. That uh, if you just say a public hearing, you, 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 you notice a public hearing, and you say. Hey, anyone who's interested, you know, put the ad in the paper, have the open meeting law notice, and ask people to come. In most communities, you'll get like two people, mm -hmm. you know, because it's the nature of people don't follow things; they're busy. So I think a public hearing. Um, so, so there there are ways to get information from folks, you know, sh focus groups, small meetings that are much more beneficial and get, get much more input than than a public hearing. Okay, so and the so public hearing part. But then at one point, you're gonna, we're going to have to have a public hearing because the state reg, not the federal yeah. law or the state law. Gonna, yeah. State reg says you have to have that. Right. But well, that's that what I was talking about. But they make their offer? Well, that's what I do. Then, then, then at one point, we'll, we'll negotiate about things. Nothing's going to be final then. Then let's say we're then at a point where we're, we're not in agreement. Well, then, you know, when we have a public hearing, 
we understand that there's multiple purposes for that public hearing. The public, it's, it's to hear from the public about what they care about, as it always is. It's, it may be, if we have a draft, we have a draft, but if we're not even there, if no agreement, it's to hear from the public, but it's also it's, you know, to, to have a way for the public to express its opinion of uh -huh. the relative importance or unimportance of FCAT and public access to the cable company. And to do that, you know, you, you have to make sure that people know that this is our opportunity to do that. Because in the world we live in, if you don't do that, yeah, people are too busy. They're not. Yeah. They're not going to. As yeah. much they can think you're the most important thing in the world, and they can tell you they like to be there, but they're not going to be there. So for that, until you know the reason, kind of like litigate, until you know the reason. So that's yeah. my recommendation. And yet, so it sounds like it might be premature <coughs> to set dates for those hearings. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and then that I, should still be kind of on our agenda yeah. moving now, forward. Now, when we sit down, with, it, just to be clear, it's also necessary legally to have those under the state regulation. Okay, and yeah. each town has to have a separate yes public. Well, you know, here's how I, I usually do it separately in each town. Yeah. Um, you know, but here's the law on it. it, it each, um, I think it's best for the the select boards to have it, uh, mm. not to delegate it. Have a part of yeah, it. Yeah, because there's no, nothing that's yeah. on that. So I think that's the best way to do that. I also think you could have uh, a joint, you know, select board meeting where they have that hearing, in one town because it doesn't viol it doesn't violate the open meeting law. To have a meeting outside of your town, but that's a preference. Folks might say, "No, we much prefer," and and also say, "If we're gonna, if we're in a dis if we're in a dispute with Comcast, a difference." I'm going to suggest more than one hearing uh, for different reasons. I'm going to suggest on hearings we have a hearing on public access, we have a hearing on government access because of the, <coughs> the, the educational access. The educational access we want to hear from teachers, we want to hear from students, we want to hear from administration. On government access, we want to hear from department heads town administrators, board of selectmen. And you can't do all that in one night. On uh, public access, we want to hear from the public. And so that if we're in a dispute, or, you know, a temporary dispute, then we, we, it's important to hear from everyone. So that said, I, I agree. I, th I think we do it in each town, but with the possibility of leaving open, because you folks do do a lot of, you have joint selectmen's meeting, right? Occasionally, yeah. Um, and, like for the Tri-Town EMS, right. we, so yeah. if if the if the, they sense that that's a something that the public fair to the public, then that would be a way to have one hearing on one evening jointly. And if as long as there's not a sense the, that it's unfair to, under the open meeting law or, or the hearing process to ask people to go to another town, then that's okay. Okay, but that's also nothing we have to worry about in December. That's right. Okay. Yes, yeah, right. Push that off the plate. Yeah. No, but good. <laughs> good for mentioning all these because it yeah. gave me a chance to, to, to give you, you know, okay. oh, there's a million different ways to do things. And sure. Okay. So uh, just to sum up what you just said, um, I need to <coughs> update and finish the capital plan after getting input from Gary uh, from the camera company and Chuck Sherwood um, as necessary. Uh, I'm going to review the past, present, and future document right, and make really sure that's good. up yep. to date. Yep. Um, I'll do the same on that. Okay, I'm going to look at the uh, list of access return locations and make sure that we strike off things that we think aren't going to be useful. And add things you think that need to be added. Sure. And think a little bit about the timing. It's going to really depend on the right. studio timing. And, yeah. Um, and uh, are you going to contact contract about the Yeah, I've I'll, I I'll send an email out to both of us uh, before Monday. Okay. I spoke to Brian today. He's already, all he needs really is from you the list of the locations that he needs to separate out. Sounds good. And then we need to meet with the, uh, and this is all leading up to a meeting with Aaron Saunders, hopefully by the end of December. The, I think that'd be great. Uh, okay. But if not, you know, more, given everything, it, it yep. may be January. But the goal would be, you know, if, if we're ready and, and just, why, why not? Okay. Sounds good. Um, and then a meeting in mid-December. <clears throat> But now is where I really wish I had my computer because it's got my calendar on it. <laughs> but most uh, most days, like if it's really mid-December, most days are fine because I've got, um, I may have evening commitments, but uh, during the day, not uh, okay. as many commitments at all. Um, Christmas is on the same day this year. It's on the 25th, 25th again. Yeah. Jeez. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. um, when does school uh, school for you gets out like the 20 the little 20th? before Christmas? Uh, yeah. Are you going to come in? Oh, maybe the 22nd. No, 22nd is a Sunday. 23rd is a Monday. So you think you'll be coming in for one day on that week? I don't know, but okay. I can tell you. I should have it in my, my calendar. 
but don't plan the meeting around me. I mean, I'm just well, still invited interloper here. He'll catch it on video on demand. That's right. Now, um, we... Gregory, any day that's better or worse for you? Uh, I'm just looking right now. No. Well, let me. Uh, yeah, my last day class is. This is kind of late, but how about the morning? The morning of December twentieth, Friday. Is that bad? Yeah, that's yeah. bad. I think that'd be okay with me. Bob would not be able to be there. Yeah. What's that? The uh, morning I'll of call you back. Okay, and I know that. Um, Mr. Mr. Pierce. So, so our vacation starts on the twenty third, just okay on Monday. So. Oh, okay. So the twenty third. Okay. So I, <coughs> I know that David Pierce from Sunderland will not be able to be here on the. <coughs> um, he's he has a hard time getting out during the day because of his regular work day. Um, well, uh, uh, being a, being a big fan of Christmas Carol, let me how, let me ask about this. Um, as Scrooge would say, what about Saturday, December twenty first, the morning? Uh, yeah, Saturdays are fine with me. I have no problem with that. I prefer so, yeah, that'd be fine with me. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. That that works great for me. Okay. So uh, we could do it. Uh, would nine o'clock be okay? Saturday, nine a.m. The long way from the Pats Ravens game on Sunday. It's December twenty one. Important event. It is. <laughs> yep. Um, oh. Deerfield Town Hall. Um, I'm and sure. Would I, we be able to get a key? You can get it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All you know is the code, right? Yeah. Yeah, I've got that. And Saturday no longer counts in the open meeting law notice. So it, you can meet on Saturdays, but the notice you have to make it, it you can't, can't count you Saturday anymore. Right. It used to be able to count it, oh, so okay. that you'd have to just make sure it's, it's make it's, sure it's posted by Wednesday, Wednesday or something yeah. like that. Yes. Um, but we can actually just post this right now. I'll email that off if we agree. I'll email that off to the town administrators, and they can have it posted right away. <clears throat> okay. And hopefully David's not traveling or something early. Okay, so that gives us a good solid three weeks to work on these things, which yeah. I think is a it, that's doable. Okay. So, so in our basic homework from the towns is to look at those maps and get information on the not served areas. Yep. Um, and look at the um, uh, what do I want to call them the drops, and see if there's locations that need to be added or taken away from that list. And that's. I think Deerfield's list is pretty co comprehensive at this point. I've got to ask around yep. whether Waitley's Fire Department is worth um, putting in there. Okay. Use strand maps and make a list of served uh, locations that need to be included in the next contract. Okay. Sounds good. Um, anything else we need a uh, bill for? Under his uh, was a determination of potential uses of fiber-based INET. That discussion was what we had that took us so long to get to Bill's part. Is that? Yeah, no, it was, it was a great meeting. A lot of all substance, and Doug's is fantastic. Yeah. I mean, that's okay. all the stuff I need to understand, so that's great. Um, and, of course, I'll contact Greg Hall, too. We'll talk about the testing, get us a, okay. a, a yeah. cost of service for yep. spec, spec yeah. and yep. cost. We'll probably, the best way to do it is probably have a set up a conference call between the three of us to talk a little about it first, and then, and then you'll send them yep. some specifics, and then we'll figure yeah. out, <clears throat> you can figure out the best places to test. Yep. Uh, you might yeah. send an email to folks and give you their, give you their opinion. Yep. Yeah. And then <laughs> I, can, I can coordinate the, those tests with the, the staff with Comcast, um, the local technicians, as well as the, uh, yeah, the, the office, and make sure that they're available on those days. Yeah, because we can test. Uh, it's best if we test. Sometimes you can connect to their, uh, their uh, equipment. That's yep. good. I mean, if they, they, if they don't want that, we can test without connecting to it. It's all right. But, yeah. uh, but it's always best to coordinate. Yep. Yeah. Make sure there's no hard feelings. Yeah, so we're, we don't um, schedule our preliminary meeting with Comcast, but do you have in mind uh, what kind of time frame is that? Is that likely to be January, February? Yeah, well. <coughs> that horizon? If we, assuming we have a really oh, productive meeting in December, we may be ready for a meeting with them like, over the winter, January, February? Or do you oh. think it's, we're going to still have another bit of homework to do? No, I think we'll be ready, certainly ready in January. Uh, you know, if, 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 if we're a little sooner, I tell you, let's do it in December. I always like meeting in December. But if we're, um, yeah, but if we're meeting on the 21st, but it's, it's too, too late, right? We'd have to be <laughs> on the 23rd. Or, uh, or, um, so, 
Yeah. So that. Um, okay, but we're looking at that. It's, right. It's it's the time frame is starting to speed up. That's right. So we're lo looking in January there to to, 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 to meet then with, with, with you know, maybe one more meeting with us maybe and then that be it and then yep. meeting. So, so it could be that we, our next meeting is our last big. We got a package at the end of that meeting. Yes. Or if we and don't have an, we, or if there's anything done, we don't need another package, another meeting. We just send it yeah. out and then we're ready to meet. And and so I think we're okay. I'm okay, okay. with you know. Figuring out some time where we might want to okay. meet with Comcast. I mean, let's uh, in, Jan in January. January. That's fine February. too. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I would say January. I, I really sooner than later. I mean, I'd even say. <coughs> oh, they're not going to meet yeah. before the end of yeah. December. Yeah, it's just hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's hard. I just love right. in December, but but um, I, I think we could already we could set a date in January now to meet with them. Would they be willing to do Saturday mornings? Do you think? You know. It, I I'm guessing I, not. Yeah, but. a lot of people know. Um, yeah. But um, and, but uh, and then I see that my my next best time uh -huh. is 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 usually like a, a Friday morning. Yeah. Um, otherwise, and it will it will me. depend a lot on when which yeah. Friday morning because I'll be teaching Friday mornings starting right. January twenty something. <laughs> I, I, let's talk about the paradigm again. I, I think here's my suggestion. My suggestion is. It's one or two. I'll leave it to you. Let's come back when next time we meet and think about negotiating committee and Comcast meeting. Um, with the with, with like saying, look, if it doesn't work out, then you know we need to negotiate with the full committee. That's one option. Or two is the full committee. I, the reason I like that option is it gives a chance to some. It, it, and he, this Aaron seems like a very straight guy, uh -huh. but, but you know. And, and not a guy who would posture, but but you know, there's some folks, you know, when they're on camera, they they feel the need to prove themselves to the people they work for or something. So I like the idea of saying of having less than the full committee, uh, giving the person as chance. a first meeting. Yeah, first first. Uh, well, here's the here's the suggestion. The first meeting would be the full committee, where we introduce each other. We because introductions have been very helpful. Get this, see all the people, what you do, with the talents we have here, the get take education to your towns, the committee. It, uh, then talk about <clears throat> the areas we want to be discussing, and then say, and then we're going to meet with a negotiating committee to see if we can iron out the, the agreement. You know, Aaron, we think we should be, get this done in, in maybe just one session, but certainly two. Uh, and now, if that doesn't work out, then the committee's asked that we come back to the full committee and we have the discussions here. So I think that gives us a uh, gives the other person an opportunity to get to, to see where they best like to try to get to a deal uh so I, that's my recommendation if you're comfortable with it when you did this with conway and i'm trying to remember how it worked but my memory is that aaron gave us a proposal and you no, gave steve, him steve, back steve, i mean steve, steve and you gave him back a completely new proposal that you had written you know in other <laughs> words we've completely replaced his proposal with a new proposal yeah I, see, his and, proposal was like a, you know, a, a, even if it was informal it was on paper i, I don't view those is serious proposals. I really do believe the way you get to a serious agreement is you sit down, you talk to each other, and you work out a deal. You know, because, it, and so, that's right. So, it really wasn't, you know, the, the credit to Steve, it was just, you know, what, they, what they're going to put on paper, think if it's formal, it, it, it's just that that's, they, they thought about it, but it's not, it's not the same. It's, if this is, cable's done informally. But they nearly accepted your proposal the way you wrote it, I mean, because yeah. it contained... Yeah, and I tried to reach a, you know, come in with a place and say, look, this is fair to both parties. And, and he and I, uh, you know, had a, a, a great relationship where I, and I, you know, say, hey, this is fair, and... Uh, and, and you uh, should go for and, it, yeah. Yeah. And, and the next and, yeah. meeting we had was the agreement. I yeah. mean, you know, the, the, we, we, we never met and argued over a table. We met a, a, once maybe and talked about issues that were important. Like any committee, we argued more with each other than we did with that, the other side. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. That's right. And if yeah. we know if there's something wrong with the, the darn committee, right? Yeah, because so. it, it does seem that they, they appreciate the cost of continuing a negotiation. There actually is a cost right. with that. Right. And then if right. we've got yeah. something good in front of you, then it's yeah, better to, to, to take give, that than yeah, the extra To give more credit to you, they really not as much concerned with the cost because they're less they're employees for them. So they're actually less, a little less concerned. Although they, oh. they, they're not, and they treat their employees well. They support them well. But I, I do think what happens is when you're dealing with the folks you've dealt with a while, that's why it's always different with a new person. Yeah. Uh, and then why, you know, I, I would, if there's something that goes wrong, I'd call Steve up and say, hey, Steve, you know, can you, put your two cents in this, you know, that there's a, something that's 
reasonable and you know and I have a history and they know that look you need to treat my community fairly otherwise you know then we will have a fight about it but we don't want to if we can avoid it so there's so I think what happens is some people have worked so long in the area they've been able to figure out what's reasonable and Comcast as any cable company you know they, there's a pendulum there's times where they can have some folks in the air there you can't get anything done it's like don't even let's not even talk about it let's fight first and then but that hasn't been for a while they've tried to you know to be responsive and to be responsible they're a well-run company they're concerned about their bottom line but they value the, the, the credit to Comcast they they they, they it's a, so, subsequent to Continental in most places and media mm -hmm. one they value the local relationship they have local people uh, they uh, they think that's an important part of who they are they're proud of it rightly so so as a result of that you know if you're substantive like we're being and you don't just say give me something because I want it or give me something because someone else has it then uh, then the response is usually pretty good you don't always agree but so I, so I think that that reflected th yeah. that fact and but but you have to be prepared if they you know like anything if they think they can just roll over here because you, you don't have it prepared, prepared then you know they're human beings. They, they Comcast has just completed the build out that they committed from the yeah. contract three years ago, and they, they were yeah. great. Uh, you know, I mean, they, they they could not have been more responsive to all of the issues that we had. Uh, they didn't charge us for things that I think they could have. They were to, to their credit, and, and I have to say the West, the West, the Western no. Mass folks, <laughs> the folks in Western Mass have traditionally been very good. A lot of folks in Eastern Mass too, but but uh, but but good. So. With that, I think we're on a good road, I think and so. uh, well, I look forward. I'll talk. I'll be talking a lot to Doug, uh, yeah. maybe yourself, Joyce. Uh, I, I need. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna call Steve up and discuss the uh, Channel 15 and Sunderland and Whateley. Right, I and think Conway. He, and Conway. And Steve, yeah. Steve Fitzgibbon. Oh, okay. Only because there had oh. been discussions before. Just yeah. to kind of get his background on that. And, and it may be that, that the only way to deal with Comcast is to have a full-time paid person to do it. Uh, we <laughs> no, just didn't no, have no. one. We didn't, we didn't yeah, have no, one it, to it, do that. Be hard. Yeah, so, I mean, I, to some extent, you do have a full-time paid person. Right. And yeah. I'm happy to, to run with this if possible. But, but you, you, I mean, but you, you've got, a, there, there, we have like two full-time jobs worth of stuff for you to do. <laughs> sure. So, sure. And he's doing it all. And he's doing it all. Woo <laughs> yeah, no, he, he does. He's a great, great person. So, the, uh, uh, um, yeah, well, I guess the conversation will begin. Steve, have you had trouble sleeping at night? <laughs> I think I got to, I, I know why. You know that Channel 15 in a... <laughs> no, I think about it every day. Is that something that's been on your mind? That, that yeah, you I mean, I think in, for, for history, yeah. it's really been Waitley that's been asking for it. Yeah. I think until recently, Sunderland was happy to run their own out of their own server okay, over yeah, there. Yeah, but they're, right. they're, they're kind of also looking for more consolidation and using this. They, they've made the request. They've yeah. been very directly requesting I remember that, and yes. Yeah. Yeah. They they may beforehand, have they really, yeah. Sunderland was the, the leader of they right. don't want to lose their local right. channel, but they're a control right. of their channel. But right. now they're they're looking to do full consolidation with FCAT. They they want us to originate yeah. the channel, yeah. and right uh, for the past two months we've actually been doing their government work, uh, the government cable cast. They're sort of stepping to one side. So, yeah. or as we say uh, to Sunderland, uh, FCAT uh, tomorrow Sunderland, and after that. Waitley maybe. <laughs> maybe Waitley maybe and Con and, and it would be I think um, you know we Waitley or, and Conway would, could probably share a channel 15 Absolutely. if it were programmable yeah. because the two towns are so small um, we think that could happen then yeah. you know we, we, we wouldn't mind if they saw our selectman broadcast yeah. and it doesn't conflict with their selectman broadcast and things like that and yeah so, yeah. so, so that that would actually if that would help get Conway's Channel 15 to a point where they can program as well yeah, and have. They've been very good things. with Conway and and that and the idea of kind of bringing in a full partner. So that's um, okay. So I'll I'll, I'll speak. I'll, I'll just get a background <clears throat> from Steve from his perspective. Yeah. And then I'll uh, he might then I'll not talk to you. He might not. And then he maybe might not we'll. Uh, <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, and maybe what we'll do is we'll speak to Aaron, just on the phone beforehand, right. kind of separate it out. This is a that's or again in my Christmas Carol mind, uh, which is year round. Uh, this is a Christmas present issue for us now, no, mm -hmm. not a Christmas future one yet. We'd like to see if we can talk about this happened, why yeah. can't this yeah. be done now, yeah. And when you um, say Christmas present, not the thing with the bow. Yeah. Yeah. Christmas, <laughs> yes, here right present, now. Present. Yes, here right um, now. Yes, yes, yes. Before right. the commission breaks up for the meeting, I do want to take two or three minutes because one gentleman at this table has been fairly silent, and I want to reinforce a couple of things. Gregory, you, you work at Deerfield Academy, correct? I work at Deerfield Academy. I'm a systems administrator. Okay. Right. Um, one thing that has 
come a, come across this table in the past that we haven't talked enough about is how we uh, there's that whole section of Deerfield north of the Butterfly Museum that we don't talk about and there's amazing educational resources up there that we feel should be a part of what we do a part of uh, public access definitely we even looked at one and, point of having you know as like a studio like a, a presence up this for Doug was in, before we had an access corp mm -hmm. when right. we did the last license we looked at including Deerfield Academy and trying to reach out to folks about the educational channel having sort of involvement in that so right. I'll leave right. but that Sorry. that'll be that'd be fantastic from from both sides yeah and I, I actually just wanted to find out if you'd be interested in in doing some checking with other staff up there or with the administration at DA and find out if there's an interest in becoming more involved in local access TV, in finding out if there's an interest in doing uh, local access TV and, and finding any ways to, to um, you know, work collectively yeah. towards creating more programming, creating more content, doing anything, um, you know. And if that's possible, it would be great. You think Deerfield Academy or Historic Deerfield? Uh, Deerfield Academy, actually. Um, whether there's, I don't know if there's currently media classes or if there's currently any kind of video production that's happening there. There's video production being done. There's great there. sports up there, I know that. And there's know great that. sports, and, and we've got a great strong relationship with Frontier Regional with a lot of student um, interns and a lot of programming happening there. Um, but there's no reason why the same thing couldn't uh, be true at DA. Um, having sporting events be, be uh, recorded for Cablecast, having presentations or lectures being recorded for Cablecast. Sure, I'm um, sorry about that. Or and, video uh, on demand is what I imagine would be. Video for, on demand. You know, and, parents would so be able so to see their kids. Right. You know. And we've, we've reached out to. Um, there's, a, there's a company that's been, that's come to us and they're trying to reach out to more schools and yep. is they actually install all the equipment on campus and sure. no charge and they use um, parent subscriptions to um for for oh. um supporting their business which is video on demand or really broadcast mm -hmm. uh, doug, doug would be happy to to send you know contribution letters to all of those parents <laughs> voluntary <laughs> <laughs> rather than have them subscribe yeah. i'm making that up doug well it, it's it's not so much i i guess i understand that model uh the model i was thinking of is actually having the students do the work that this company is now doing, having them manage cameras and do editing and, and you know, like we do with Frontier, we have the infrastructure for a video on demand service. And if it came down to it, we, you know, we'll find some money if, if equipment is needed. Um, if it means that suddenly there's a group of folks at DA that are doing some video production and presenting these programs and getting these things online, actually, you know, yeah. um, turning it into an educational opportunity instead of just a service that some third-party company is getting money for. Okay. Um, we yeah. but we're open to any and all possibilities. Um, we're not trying to intrude on anybody's territory, uh, but we would love to work in cooperation with DA to make something positive happen. So, so yeah. yeah. um, and I'm hoping that also you'll be able to bring to this commission any interests or concerns that Deerfield Academy might have with local access TV or, or suggestions as to how we can better work with you. Um, or better provide services. Sure. I'll talk to somebody. And that's all I have on that note. Um, is there anything else that needs to come up here? Just a I, I brought up all my. Oh, you did? <laughs> no, I brought them all. Up already, okay. Yeah. Then just a reminder that the next meeting of the Tri Town Commission will be held on December 21st, 2013, 9 a.m. That date is to be confirmed by our folks at the Deerfield offices here. Um, the meeting will happen at Deerfield and Town Hall at this table. Same place? Okay. Yep. And to make it formal, a motion to adjourn, please. Uh, I would move that we adjourn. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doug. All right. Bye.